I want to live for as long as possible. I don't want to die. And I don't want to die for blacks. Blacks are like the worst thing you can ever die for. I'd rather die for like Jews. I want the Jews to send me to be Cyril. And then I get assassinated. I don't want to die for blacks. If you look at the track record of people that died for blacks. And the fact that blacks have done fuck all for them. But quote them and be like, yeah, I'm a big oist. Hey, get the fuck out of here, man. On culture. You're a narcissist? Is that for me? Yeah. I'm so nervous. I've never been on camera before. So I'm not really... Do we speak to the camera or is my mic fine? I don't really... What happens if I lose my words? I don't know. Uh, what's a narcissist? The person who thinks they shit cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you. Are you a narcissist? Are you full of shit? I did something very fascinating uh, at some point in my life because... Although people are starting to recognize me now, I don't know if there's terms for like what I am, like a micro celebrity. Like there's 10,000 people in the world that know me. Um, at some point, I used to go hard on social media, especially on Facebook. Used to be very controversial. Uh, someone that you say is a mate of yours, a nota, I think I used to be like that. If he'd met me at that time, we were probably want to make the best content because I would have given him fucking hell. And I know he would have given me hell as well. Yeah, but you wouldn't be able to do content like that. In order for it to work between you and your and Nota. But sure. you, of course, you're, you, I think when uh, you know how to read the room uh, more. Even Nota has the ability, but he cannot stop himself from talking. I think when uh, you would know, if, if, as you describe yourself from the time, you and Nota would be in the same room, the audience cannot be able to pick out who's saying what because all the time the two of you want to talk all the fucking time we would have we would have made amazing content people would have loved that fucking so i i learned over time to stop commenting and responding to every comment and trying to explain myself yeah um and somewhere along the way people called me names when i used to be more controversial <laughs> when i was more conventionally controversial than i am now and I used to take offense. Uh, so terms like narcissist, I'd be like, fuck you, do you know what a narcissist is? And then at some point I just stopped and I went and I looked at the definitions. I went on Google, definition of narcissist, definition of God complex. <laughs> and I realized that, um, oh, okay, I, I think I actually ticked the box. You do have a God complex. <laughs> so, you know, according to definition, I'm definitely a narcissist. Yeah. And after seeing the definitions, I then really decided to own them. And... If you've ever seen Eminem 8 Mile, yeah. there's a part where they're battling with this guy and he literally, like, I live in a, in a trailer with my mom. Yes, whoever fucked my girl or whatever. Um, so I try to own those negative, negative connotation terms. And what's been interesting since I own them is that when I look at all the supposed big leaders and people that have changed the world, they all seem to have the exact same traits. You know, so I, I think I'm in good company. So I'm definitely a narcissist, if that's a question you want to ask me. And I own it pr proudly, but I'm hoping that my narcissism will help inspire other kids who feel like they are really great and they want to do great things and who ha society has bullied to want to be humble and know, yeah. um, and to just own it. I think South Africa has an, has, um, an obsession with humility, and I think it doesn't help us as black people. We are obsessed with how things are said, the words. We can, in this exchange, we are potentially going to exchange thousands of words. Yeah. You will say the word fuck at least maybe 10 times, and that's what will, they will latch on, the sure. audience. I think they have uh, an unnecessary obsession with how words are being said and with the idea of um, humility. And I think it has a lot to do with our past apartheid mm. past i think we inherited a lot of african conservatism in terms of the language um in terms of what is accepted and what is not accepted and stuff like that what do you think about that so i believe human beings are zombies uh robots uh, or that's what's been proven i think historically mm. where the people who run the world now have figured out that you can just condition us you can program us and then we behave a certain way that's why a black child from a private school in johannesburg can't really relate with into an ISA, I say Makai, for example, because it's literally programming. So the fact that you have ancestors and you're black, clearly the spirit doesn't just come in and you guys can can connect and vibe on that level. Um, so humility to me is, um, is a programming function. 
that has been implanted. Uh, we can speak about Afrikaner conservatism, of course. But before that, I was raised Zulu. And Zulus are very big on respect. You mustn't. So Africans in particular, many other parts of the world, they're very much about submission. And you need to grind submission into people in various ways. I think where we are today, the biggest tool for it in the current world we're living in is religion. Because being a lamb of God, uh, being God-fearing and all those things, the idea of speaking out, it's almost devilish. Who do you think you are? You yeah. must always be in the shadow of God and you must always be. So I have a huge issue with humility because it really, really limits a lot of our potential. Absolutely. Um, especially as black Africans. And we need more. It's the reason why I like Nigerians. Nigerians walk around with some fucking superiority complex. Yeah. Uh, it's the reason I like Americans and the whole world hates Americans for it because everywhere they go, they speak loudly. Yeah, so where are you from? And you're like, fuck, just shut up. You know, um, it's stuff that we have to fix if we want to make the world a better place. You should never, and we say these nice quotes, but we don't mean them. You should never have to dim your light um, to fit in a space. I think now with the feminist woman empowerment movement, that's been the whole thing. Women shouldn't have to lower themselves it shouldn't be that you change your words to suit men, to make men feel comfortable. Mm. No, I know I'm smarter than my husband, but you're, you know men have a fragile... E no, fuck them and their fragile ego. Let them know that you are king bitch, you are queen Cleopatra, you are weenie. And own it, you know. And those of us who don't fear powerful women will gravitate towards you and will do great shit. So language um, is definitely, a, for me, the number one tool that has been used to colonize the human mind. And you're very right that in the language we use, we'll speak, speak, speak. Yeah, fucking pussy. Ow, to get mm. I'm like, but did you hear what he was saying? He was saying, this is how you make money. Hey, I am fine. I mean, to get And you're like, some of the words, because I've been trying to raise my kids to transcend swear words. Some of the swear words are literally one letter away from another normal word. Shit and shot, for example. Yeah. You just change a vowel and it's a completely different word. That's why kids will be like, oh, for five cents. And you're like, this kid is cursing. Yeah. But you'll be like, ah, it's fine. They didn't use certain uh, vowels. I'm like, that's, your brain is so tiny. It's pathetic. And that's, I guess, part of what I'm trying to do, to try and awaken and unlock the minds of people so that we can fully plug into their potential. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned women. At some point, um, as I was formulating my thoughts about the conversation I'll have with you, um, I wanted to ask you a curious question. And it's interlinked with what you said as well about leaders from the past Martin Luther King how many bitches have fucked and stuff like that jeez um, you know uh, I've been thinking about this over the last months I think that our women there's always the potential that they are a security risk to us particularly high achieving black men elite black men whose perhaps ambition is to serve black people uh, in order for you to be a leader that um amasses millions of followers it appears as though you need to be almost angelic you cannot sleep with multiple women in fact you are not even allowed to shout and have a, um, a back and forth with your women without your women uh, being a security risk because the day you live her uh, <laughs> she will be on twitter spaces or she will have an instagram video talking about how you abused her and when you look at the abuse, nothing was physical. She was well taken care of. You were not even verbally abusive. It's just that when you were fighting in, like any other normal couple, you would fight. But that is now used against you. In order to save black people, you would need to be almost like an angelic figure. Why, why are you undercover wanting to speak about who's tail or no Andy Lempisan? Nah. <laughs> Andy I'm Lempisan kidding. Is, not a, is not my leader. I'm kidding. So, He's not uh, a leader in any shape. I guess for anyone who maybe might bump into this conversation, it obviously came out. I think I saw it on Twitter. Andy Lempisan is ex-girlfriend, ex-wife, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure either, but it's yeah. a baby mama or something. Sure. Uh, apparently but she but let me qualify the him. story. Sorry to cut you. Sure. I am not referring to Andy Lempisan when I'm talking about No, them. no, fair I'm enough. talking about black leaders. No, 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 you're right. Um, and you're trying to help black people. And because the woman next to you is next to you and they're trying to attack you, they might use her and she becomes of a security course. risk. Security risk. There's so many angles to what you're raising because I'm just thinking of a black woman is a security risk to a black man. I'm trying to figure out if a, is a black man a security risk to a powerful black woman as well. Um, it, it, well, she, he can. I, I wonder. He can. So 
what we've been taught, because again, we're conditioned with zombies. What we've been taught is that women are generally agreeable. Um, women normally are easier to work with. They agree, they submit, they can carry tasks, whether we call it genetic, women have always been sent. And there's an argument that the people that run the world are trying to feminize men. Because if you make men more feminine, they will pick up the agreeable notion of a woman. Mm -hmm. So then guys don't mind working under you. For example, being like, yo, yeah. you know, so there's an argument that, yes, when you feminize people, they become weaker. And with women, of course, when you've made them agreeable, they do whatever you want. And then along with becoming, I guess you'd call it weaker, then there's a childlike element. Because I need to be, a, you need to be a child if I'm going to be the adult that sends you around. Yeah. And what happens with kids is when you don't give kids what they want, they throw tantrums. And that's almost essentially what you're asking or saying that there's potential risk in being with a woman who is your child. And once you leave her, uh, she might throw a tantrum and destroy your life. And I guess your question is, or not a question, but the concern is black men in particular need to be angelic. They need to be well behaved. Patrice, Barack Obama, Sia Colisi, I guess. Yourself included. Uh, I mean, with the work that you're trying to do now, yeah. um, all of a sudden there's an interest with the number of kids that you have, but we'll get there. Sure. I'm just making an example. Yeah, yeah. And that is being used as almost like a character reference about what, of course. what you can be as a leader. So if of you're course. trying to build a community of people, potentially you'll fuck a thousand women, if there are a thousand women. Jesus. Be yeah, well, something like that. You? Character is that me now? Yeah, fucking yeah. a thousand women. Come on. Um, there's a huge danger for black men of the type of heroes that are being peddled to black men. Again, we're speaking propaganda and programming. When you look at the type of black heroes there are on TV and movies, most of these guys are so unattainable for the black man. Whether it's uh, King T'Challa in, in Wakanda, whether it's Barack Obama, whether it's Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. For the average black guy to be Nelson is... You have to be phenomenal. Whereas on the other hand, when it comes to white men and you look at like a Captain America, you look at a George Bush, the average white man can become whatever. And they program white people, men and women, to believe they can be anything they want. With us, to what you're saying, you have to be tall, you have to be strong, you have to be well-educated, you have to be sensitive to women, mm -hmm. you have to not swear, you have to be a great Christian. If, like Barack Obama had to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's been a more perfect president. Um, from what we're taught about perfection. Yeah, just a perfect presentation. I yeah. agree with you. He had a perfect presentation. He was a great orator. Yeah. He was good-looking. He was light-skinned. Um, he spoke well. Great he, husband. Yeah, great father. Yeah. He, he, he may well have had multiple women that we don't yeah. know about. But I'm just saying, from a presentation yeah. perspective, he looks perfect. And that's the standard that we are being aspired to now. Like, If I want to lead groups of people, I need to make sure that I haven't slept with women. And you can never do that because these guys are so far from you. So I looked at that dynamic and I was like, you know, this is really tough. And I've never tried to be perfect. I think I was perfect as a kid, naturally. You know, I was an agreeable goody two-shoes. I did well at school, sports, academics, polite to adults. And then I went through my wave of consciousness at tertiary. And then I started studying the world's leaders, historically especially. And I started studying people that changed the world. And I started picking up certain patterns. And some of them were of rebellion. Mm -hmm. And I had to try and figure out where do I think I fit? Where do I sit? Um, and in doing that, also then start looking at the potential pitfalls. Because if, for example, I want to be the next version of Tupac, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, but I don't want to be killed, how do I avoid it? You know, so I try to look at those learnings. So I don't, I don't repeat the same Chris Honey speeches and I say certain things. It's like, whoop, this one's problematic. Let's get rid of him. Non-racialism is a great protection for a black person on the come up. It, you'll, you'll get much further for black people going around saying you're non-racialist. So that's a means to an end, not something that you, you genuinely believe in? Who, me? I'm just saying, like, if you then have, if, to, if that's if you your have to agenda. adapt it in, in your yeah. speech, it's, 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 it serves a purpose. Yeah. But then it can be aligned to you. 
we could say, okay, he believes in non-rationalism, sure, uh, black and white and shit like that, sure. even though you may not believe it. 100%. So it becomes a protection so you don't get killed. Because if you're just pro-black, fuck whites, white supremacy, they are crazy whites. It may not be the whites you're going after. They may be crazy whites who are just like, nah, fuck this nigga, or fuck you, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they take you out, like an idiot out there who's just an extremist. But if you're like, no, I'm not racialist, Musi Maimani, I've got a white girlfriend, or I'm Nelson Mandela, uh, black domination. You know, it, it works as a protection because you need to focus on what's your objective. What are you trying to achieve? Another great protection, which look, this is a conspiracy. Mm-hmm. This is not fact. Kanye West, I believe, I believe has two invisible cloaks. Uh, the first one is religion. So you're crazy. You're Kanye. You've got these, what, what? You're like, no, but I, I serve Jesus Christ and I serve God. Oh, no, he's religious. It's fine. He's a Christian. So he plugs into that programming. He's got a it's gospel fine. album. It's got a gospel album. Mm-hmm. So that becomes an invisible cloak to people that could potentially target you. Because mm-hmm. you're like, no, man, but he's Christian. He's fine. He's, he's drank from the, the cooler, whatever. The second one is the bipolar dynamic mental of guys. Health. Actually, I'm not, I'm not mentally okay. Yeah, mental health. And that becomes a protection. So I study some of these things. You know, look at someone like an R. Kelly versus a Michael Jackson. R. Kelly gets attacked with whatever. You've got so many different ways to speak out as R. Kelly. And for me, because I love studying human beings and psychology, it's if I was R. Kelly, if I was O.J. Simpson, if I was Bill Cosby, how would I speak about this thing? Mm. And then you look historically. I mean, you look at Vladimir Putin. You look at Hitler. These guys are mass killers. We're not talking played with little girls or little kids. These are murderers on a mass scale who got a lot of people to buy into their agendas, right? And you realize human beings are not the way we maybe think they are. So if I was R. Kelly, can I go out there and, and own it like Eminem and say, look, I do sleep with little girls and this is the reason. And I urge some of you guys to interview these girls and ask them what type of a human being I am. Very controversial, you're getting canceled, you're wrong, you're admitted to pedophilia, whatever the case may be. But then other people are like, let's actually study this thing. And worse, if R. Kelly actually has the intellect to do historical studies and starts pointing pictures as if you look at King George, if you look at Tumswati, if you look at, and you look at the age gap between them and their wives, some of your favorite heroes, we speak about perfect black men, but do you know Nelson Mandela used to beat his ex-wife, etc. All of a sudden, because again with narcissism, Penwell is God. Jesus was going around, the same Jesus you claim to love was going around saying that he's the son of God. And he was going around challenging priests. I am a living example of the same Jesus you worship. And you're like, no, but it's not the same. Yes, it's not the same because I'm here now, but this is exactly why he was crucified. Because the people back then were trying to cancel him like you're trying to cancel me. And this is exactly why I'm going to be a God. You're going to help me. Just like people helped him. So... My whole thing is this. Um, Taking it back to um, black men doing... Protection and invisible cloaks. Yeah. For me in particular, I want to study all of these guys, the ones that won, the ones that lost, Marcus Garvey and those guys. Look at what they won, how far they got. Look at where they lost, how far they lost. Mm. And then I just want to be a better version. I want to be 3.0 or 3. Point whatever. And just to deviate a bit, one of the things in particular black people seem to be struggling with, which I hope at some point we'll understand is there are people that define what success looks like in the real world. And if you end up buying into those definitions of success, having a lot of money, having a great family, whatever, buy into it fully. I don't think South Africans were colonized properly. And to this day, the big, the big issue we have is that black people are still trying to hold on to a culture and a socialization that lost to a arguably superior socialization colonization. We dress Western, we speak English, we send our kids to their schooling system, yeah. we want to have money, and yet we still want to slaughter this and do whatever. And that little friction seems to keep black people back more than it's helping them progress. If black people can help themselves get colonized, this is assuming that you buy into the the idea of this is what success looks like. Do it fully. 
Oh, but white people are running the world. Have kids with white people. Three generations later, your kids will be white and they'll inherit from white privilege. I don't think that's going to happen though. As, as it relates to... There to are people that are doing it. Um, okay, so here's a theory by Dr. Sure. Frances Chris Wilson. And yeah, she, she spent years and years, decades um, teaching this theory. Um, if she says in the system of white supremacy, if there is a freedom of relationship where blacks and whites are procreating, uh, whites innately understand that there will be white genetic annihilation. What that means is that when there's a combination between black and white, black emerges from that union. So when a black person and a white person sleeps together to make a child, a black child emerges from that. Three generations or four generations later, whiteness as we know it is annihilated because there's a bunch of mixed race kids. You may have that in your genes. Trevor Noah clearly has that in their genes, but all of you guys identify yourselves as white. And she says that, sorry, as black, I'm so sorry. You identify yourself as a black person. We see you as a black person. You speak like a black sure. person. Trevor Noah, the same thing as well. And all the other unions between black and white have produced black kids. Um, Francis Chris Wilson, Dr. Francis Chris Wilson says that white people understand this and that is why they create their own um, communities um, far away from black people, wherever you find them. Whether you find them in the Caribbean, Americas, in Africa, they always have their own spaces because they are driven by the understanding that if they freely uh, reproduce with black people, whiteness as we know it ceases to, to exist. Sure. I want to finish off that last bit because I went on a deviation. Sure. Um, so my whole thing is black men, um, myself, I want to try and own my flaws comfortably and confidently to the world. And ironically and weirdly, that's what's going to protect me in the future. So that when I get attacked, people yeah. will say, but to put in Vele is a mass murderer. Yes, but this guy has sworn before. But yes, he told us that he's God and that he's colonizing minds. He said he's a narcissist. So you can't use that against him. And I'm hoping more people will stop trying to be these perfect humans because yeah. I think it leads to a huge mental breakdown. And for me, it's one of the major causes of depression that we have to speak about at some point as a people that... You're pretending to be someone else and your mind and your genes that you inherited from your ancestors are fighting because you're trying to speak to your ancestors. They don't understand English. So they start fighting you and in your dreams. And, and that's when people get callings. and It's because there hasn't been a, a proper fusion or a progression from what you were to what you're acting and pretending to be. You look at yourself in the mirror, you're wearing a wig, makeup, etc. And your ancestors watching you through the lens that is your eyes don't know who this person is. Yeah. And they fuck out and they think something may have happened to you. So anyways, it's a, like I said, it's a very layered conversation. But yeah. I am trying to not be an angel. And I'm working very hard to almost be... I mean, I admire Hitler, King Leopold, who murdered a lot of people in Zaire, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Mm. I love Nelson Mandela and I love Furfut and the apartheid guys. So the fact that they could do great things, doing bad things, um, I want to find a better version of all that. So I can be everything. I can be good and bad. And people understand Penel has light and dark shadows in him, but he focuses more on the light and the dark will just see how that goes. Mm -hmm. um, I do not believe that we've landed on the moon. Um, it's a conspiracy theory, of course, is everything on the internet. And it's just basic things for me. I think there's about 12 people that have ever walked on the moon, according to history. Mm -hmm. I think there have been nine, six expeditions to the moon, all by, I think, American rockets. And all of it happened, it may have been in the 1960s, I'm not sure. Yeah, the first ones were in the 1960s. Few years. They all happened within a few years of each other. And since then, with the crazy technology we have today, that is so amazing, we haven't been able to send people to the moon again. Um, just that on its own, for me, is like, I don't think this is a real thing. I don't care about the flag waving. I don't care what people speak about shadows. And like, for me, it's just that whole thing of if we haven't comfortably done it more since then with better technology, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to think we've never landed on the moon. And because I now believe we've never landed on the moon, I'm not sure if the other planets exist. Even though people tell you that you can look through a telescope. I'm like, I don't look through a microscope and say, oh, here are planets. We call that bacteria or whatever the case may be. So, we are programmed to believe certain things. And 
depending on how well the storyteller is, they're like, yo, you know, 67% of, and we've done the data, and you know, that's just the story. You don't know if they actually ask people that, but it mm -hmm. sounds nice. There's a whole concept that when a white person sleeps with a black person, they give birth to black kids, I think is a pile of rubbish. But that's me. Expand. Um, I do think you can clean out, <laughs> clean out. Ooh. I do think you can alter who you are and become something completely different. I do believe that if a black man sleeps with a white woman mm -hmm. and then their offspring sleep with white people for the next three generations. Yeah, specif if they specifically sleep, sleep with, with white, white, women, people, white people, then obviously the, ge the genetic selection will be um, skewed to the white side. I believe the great, great, great grandchildren are fully white. And that's me. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of um, DNA genealogy or whatever it will it's never called, change the fact data. that yeah it will ne never change the fact that those kids are black so that's that's what you've believed yeah. based on what you've read yeah. and i'm saying i read the same stuff and i choose what i believe and what i yeah, don't for sure for sure so similar with religion that's why for me jesus is spider-man is batman it's a nice story <laughs> it's been told well enough and uh, enough people have been convinced and when you convince the people that are the core of your existence, <laughs> like your parents, <laughs> the people that will kill a lion for you, um, the people that save you from a burning house. You're like, but this has to be true. Because again, like I said, we're zombie puppets. So robots. Jesus is Spider-Man. So yeah, man. So the, uh, let me put it this way with me. I'm just trying to be cynical. Don't worry. I'm, no, no, I'm, no, no. I'm that's following your, your train of thought. Sure. Let me put it this way. I don't believe any history be beyond, let's say, 100 years. Because I'll tell you my own memory, your own memory. Mm -hmm. There's parts of it that you probably don't remember. It will take a picture not or a video. Not remember accurately. Yeah. Even. And that's your memory. Yeah. That's not someone telling you a story. That's not you reading a history book or watching the news. That's your memory. That's meant to be iron proof. But you're still not... And I'm not sure if she was wearing red or not. Yeah, absolutely. Now you're going to believe other people that have written stories. It's not even your memory. And these stories, no one is alive to verify them. Jesus' story is 2,000 years old. And it's not even a South African story. It's not even a black story. Yeah. It was actually weirdly enough brought by people that came to colonize this country. But because enough people buy into the same fucking story, we're all like, no, but Jesus, what do you mean? The Bible is like a history book. And then some people interpret, no, Jesus' mom wasn't a virgin. It just means she was pure. Mm -hmm. It's the way they spoke. No, Jesus didn't mean there was the son of God, literally. And you're like, this is just story. So... People like the idea that for some reason the black gene is dominant. I personally think it's a pile of rubbish. Mm -hmm. um, I do think black people at in a, at particular... An, at, a, at an immediate um, copulation level, black and white now, um, what, what do they produce? At a, like, what is the result of their reproduction? Black kid, white kid, they mate. What, what, what emerges from there? To at, me, an, at an immediate level. Sure. To, to me... Okay, so I need to add this disclaimer. I don't have the answers, by sure. the way. Um, Obviously, we live in a binary world. People want yes, no. Oh, yeah, for sure. So yeah, yeah. if I'm like, I don't believe we landed on the moon, I must now give an answer of no. What is the They actually filmed it. And I'm like, no, I'm not saying I know what happened. I'm saying I just don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. That's all. So I get what you're saying. in my opinion, I don't have the answers, but in my opinion, when white and black mix, they get a 50%. Um, one of the things I also go against, by the way, and this is biology and science. Yeah. I don't believe that the man determines the gender of a child. But biology will tell you, no, but if you look at the chromosomes and, and I'm like, that's nice and that's cool. And I haven't written the books. I'm not a medical doctor or done scientist. The research, the years of I'm research. just telling you just from what I'm seeing yeah. and what makes logical sense to me. I, I think the woman also has a role to play. If the guy comes from a family with lots of boys, she comes from a family with lots of girls. I think there's a 50-50 chance they'll have a boy or a girl, you know, uh, but they'll be like, no, but the man will determine. I'm like, I, I think the woman has just as much a fair chance but people disagree so with race it's the same thing for me where i do think black people are dominant is and we are changing this as we become more western mm -hmm. um, we were closer to nature than whites we lived in the elements we got more vitamin d through sunlight the the food we ate was more animalistic let me put it that way mm -hmm. and white people with their civilization and, col and, and colonization we now put on sunscreen we now are indoors mm. Um, women want to be lighter food. our diets have changed yeah. that's why we get sick so easily so maybe we won't even need to sleep with white people to become white you know maybe we just need to spend enough time in cold regions 
change our diets and you'll see us just getting lighter on our own yeah i think it i so, think there is a there is but then you have to believe in other theories as well there is a thought that white emerges from africa and sure. it goes up north sure. and because of the climate they change sure. and that's how they look uh, th- that's why they look the way they, sure. they look it's it's not that they are different from us or we are different from them sure. it's just the regional climate determining over hundreds of years or thousands of years how they look like so i think i'm inclined to believe Espe- you. especially and this is this is where for me the, my brain where you get people fighting for something so hard and then believing in a contradictory so if we want to say the black gene is stronger than the white gene mm. and then the same person is going to tell you all life originated from africa i'm like why then are you even distinguishing yeah or are you trying to say that someone who's more in tune with nature has got a stronger Maybe I'm willing to listen to that argument. If I sleep with the chimpanzee, the chimpanzee has a stronger gene than mine, so my child will be more chimp than human kind of situation. Yeah. Um, so, so maybe there's that, but I don't have the answers. All I do is I question stuff. Yeah. The danger in the world we live in is that we are a uh, culmination of lots of layers of assumed thinking. Yes, So absolutely. If the foundations, the one plus one is equal to three, doesn't matter how far you build the pyramids they'll always be built on the wrong premise and you're like but everyone knows one plus one is three and i'm like I'm not really sure guys it's like oh who the fuck do you think mm. this is old science and i'm like i think somewhere along the way they kind of got it wrong so for all of us to believe for example you you referenced something you've read mm-hmm. as an example you read it maybe in english and that person who wrote it also needed to have some assumptions in the data that they had. Yeah. No one has lived long enough she's an, to be able to... She's an African-American professor who died, I think, five years ago. Yeah, um, a professor that had to read certain books and work on certain assumptions to then come up with their own theories. Yeah. And I go and I dispel. That's why I say things like, I'm God, because I want to go to the source of everything. Yeah. And even if I'm wrong, it's fine, because human beings, no different from me and you, decided to begin laying the building blocks and we're just coming at the top to argue, no, but rockets, actually rocket fuel. I'm like, don't, we don't even know how to actually light a match, where that thing comes from. And you're coming to speak about something on so many layers. And that's why in the innovations that need to come, and that's why some of us love Elon Musk, for example, he goes back to the more popular early inventors. So if Jesus is one of the first revolutionaries, Thomas Edison, Nikolai Tesla, and the boys are like the first documented inventors they were inventors before that yeah for sure so he goes back to those guys to first principles what are we trying to achieve if you want me to believe the moon exists sure why and how does it affect my life yeah how does it help us and then from there i i then start building theories based on that that's why if you want to be like no but the man determines and i'm like sure what does this do for me you know what i mean so yeah i think i'll I'll stop there but those are my feelings all right you said jesus and spider-man and i thought um, Jay Z said Jesus was a carpenter and he is a made beats. Come on, so, <laughs> that's a great line, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't mean anything, but it was like Jesus was a carpenter. He is a, he made beats. Um, so it means everything, by the way. Yeah, of course. If you if you look at the statement as it is, sure. it doesn't mean anything. Sure, you know, and then it means something if you interpret it. Sure, or if you impose an interpretation on it. Sure, uh, or if you allow Jay Z to expand on it, then it means something. Of course. Um, speaking on on religion. Um, there's almost an intrinsic link between religion and cults. Um, you could argue that religions are cults and that there is no difference. There's always the idea that there is a superpower. In cults, it just so happens that for the most part, the higher power or uh, the presiding officer over everyone else uh, is the human being. And in sure. religion, of course, it's, it's, it's the unseen. Um and the unseen is usually a historical figure, uh, Prophet Muhammad or Buddha. Uh, yeah, well, sure. even though of course he no longer is, they no longer with us. There are two cases, and I, I, knowing that I was going to speak to you, I thought about these two two prominent cases that I thought of. Uh, Jonestown. Oh, Jim Jones, yeah. the boy. Yeah, Jim Jones leads a bunch of Americans, black and white, um, into joining his cult. Yeah, and they get land in the Caribbean. Who yeah. Orania? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Sure. They get land in the Caribbean, right? Sure. His ultimate goal, he doesn't tell his congregants, but his ultimate goal is to have a mass suicide. Sure. Uh, they get to the Caribbean and they, 
at some point in the 1970s, 1978, they drink Kool-Aid with poison sure. and they kill themselves. Sure. And hundreds of people die, if not thousands. Uh, a few survive to tell the story. Sure. The other case... That Before I the other case, sure. uh, we also just have to highlight that they built up Jonestown. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before they committed, great before they committed yeah, yeah, yeah. suicide, yeah. they actually it built Orania. It was a great Orania. community. They didn't just go there and then that kill was themselves. Self, yeah, yeah. Self-sustaining. Self-sufficient community. Boom. They bought land in a different country. Sure. You know, they have their, they had their own aircraft and shit like that. Sure. But ultimately, people died. Sure. And people killed themselves. So that was the motive yeah. to have, like... <laughs> You go out in the blaze. <laughs> That's yeah. what um, MCs in hip-hop would say. You go sure. out in the blaze. <laughs> you know. The other case is a more recent one, closer to South Africa, or in South Africa, um, in Ngobo. There are seven niggas who call themselves Mangoba, uh, seven angels in Ngobo. They, Jeez. they recruit people. Um, some of them retired teachers. You have to sell your possessions and be part of that community. Give them hundreds of thousands and be part of that community. Oof. Seven niggas go to a police station. They kill five police officers plus a soldier. Six people die. Hmm. Um, and of course, they get arrested eventually because there's a standoff between them and additional support sure. from the policing side. Um, these niggas claim that these were the end times and they are the seven angels chosen by God. Um, to come and fix the world. You know what I'm saying? So they went out on a blaze. I, sure. I, I, I give this context to pose the question to you. Which it appears as though there's always a link or there's um, an unfortunate link between cults and people dying in, yeah. in, in huge numbers. Um, with you wanting to build a community of people, do you think about that shit? About getting my people to kill themselves? You know? Ooh, me. And going out in a place. Yeah, but something like that. <laughs> or ki killing people that you don't feel are deserving of life because of the choices that they make. Or Because the world out. is polluted, yeah, man, and we must like all that. die. Yeah. Um, the, the conditioning machine of the world we live in did a really good job on me. I think I was destined to be a Barack Obama, Nelson Mandela figure. Did very well in school, speak really good English. At some, at some point, my Afrikaans was by a float, so my Afrikaans was great. Um, I played rugby. I went to the right schools. Mm -hmm. Had a good mix of being able to and be comfortable with white people and whiteness. And I wanted to be a global citizen. So they did a great job with me. I don't know where it went wrong. I think there's like a virus in my head which fucked out. Or maybe with failure and heartbreak, maybe... It fucked out my mind. But with all their conditioning, and imagine like the people that control the world invest so much money in turning us into these perfect humans. Yeah. And they were doing a great job with me. And then I just, not only did I fucking lose it, but I'm coming to dismantle their whole, their whole fucking thing. You know, which is very dangerous. I healthily or unhealthily question almost everything. And I do bring it back to language. And I do look at, you know, Things that I probably shouldn't be looking at and asking questions I probably shouldn't be asking because they're problematic. Jim Jones, okay. So I study, there's a great episode on Netflix of a series called Explained mm. on cults. It's very great. And one of the big lines there is that cult plus time equals religion, oh, which yeah. is very true. Yeah, for sure. I, mean, uh, I think it's in, even in the definition of what cults are. Oh, snap. Yeah. So... Uh, Every religion started off as a cult. Absolutely. Um, that's almost a fact. Um, it seems that the people that get first to market get like naming rights. You know, when you're at varsity, you can't write an essay in first year and be a brain. It's like, no, you have to reference. Like, no, but this is my work. They're like, no, are you a professor somewhere? Who are you? So you have to reference. So you're not allowed to come up with your own religion. If you want to build a religion, you have to borrow from Christianity and Buddhism and what, what, because they were the first to market. The, the guys who get first to market get to set dibs. And because they've got the dibs, they're no longer called cult, cults. <laughs> Those of us who arrive now, we're not allowed to be like, no, I invented the cell phone. They're like, no, you need to pay for that IP. Yeah. So I can't be a religion because I'm too young, unfortunately. But over time, and if I put in enough work, and if my story is convincing enough, um, I'll get there. On Netflix as well, Wild Wild Country. 
Oh yeah, so with Osho is another saw, great I, series. I saw, well, well, and also that has tragic uh, tragedy sure. and death and some stupid shit. They That's also have their own Orania. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, like there are positives to them building the, the sure. their own community, self-sustaining. And, yeah, but for some fucking reason. There will be people that are dying. Yeah. There are there will be people that are, are, are gonna be killed. Yeah. You know, and that's for me like the greatest concern. Even though there are positives. Sure. It's like you can't really over highlight the positives because it's like we are building these communities so that we can be secluded from the policing and do the shit that we want to do on these people. Yeah. Type of thing. Life is about language and story, man, and how well you can tell it. That's why I don't want to be an angel. I it's it's easier to be a bad person that does good things. Or it's smarter to be a bad person that does good things than to be a good person who one day you do a bad thing and you get written off. That's what happens with the cancel culture. You can be so good and then one girl accuses you and your whole career collapses. Yeah. Versus someone who's a huge asshole. F- fuck everyone, niggas must be killed. Oh, but you know, he donates food to the hungry. <laughs> so maybe it's not that, b- it's, it's much smarter to be the bad guy who does good things. The people who control our minds get to set the narrative, whether it's through the schooling system, through mainstream media, yeah. through a documentary, whatever. That's why at some point, Nelson Mandela and the ANC, Nelson Mandela was a terrorist and the ANC was a terrorist organization. Yeah. That's why today in America, we'll tell you about terrorism and insurgents, <laughs> weapons of mass destruction. If you ever go to those countries and you speak to the people, they will tell you a different story and all of a sudden, Americans are the evil. They're the biggest terrorists. In the they world. have 600 military bra- bases around the world. They are always fighting with people. They yeah. are bombing. Right now, they're bombing Somalia. What the fuck? Before I go back to cults, um, Thanos is one of my favorite characters on TV. More, I like him more than Jesus. Thanos is that big nigga. I don't Thanos follow. is the big nigga from the Avengers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, people like the Joker. Heath Ledger, the Joker. Oh yeah, from I, the Dark I, I read about. I don't watch movies, but I read about. You have to watch his, movies because no, that, that's the that's king an, of story. I I avoided movies since I was eighteen because I thought I saw it through with that it's indoctrination, like how oh. how we copulate with women and how we how we you, behave on lo- first dates and shit like that. I was like, ah, fuck you'll it. Av- you'll avoid mu- uh, movies mm. and music, and you'll meet people that have been indoctrinated by that. So that's they'll the, that's, yeah, they'll that's come the back and re indoctrinate yeah, and don't the, worry and the system the, is strong they have the expectation that they I mean they've been indoctrinated by movies yeah. and they have an expectation that okay when I'm going out on a date this boom. is what you need to do and shit like that boom and your whole family will support them for sure because they've watched the same movies for sure um, I do a lot of movie reviews watching movies re- reviews I know I, I watch your, and, a lot um, of your videos I know you like movies and uh, Thanos and Heath Ledger's Joker almost became a blueprint for villains moving forward because people had gotten tired of binary villains. Bad guy comes in, kills everyone. And they started building deeper characters. Yeah. And one of the things that came out from the Thanos story in particular, because Thanos, like the seven angels, felt the universe is in turmoil. And I think I have the solution. And the solution is to kill half of the universe so that the other half... I mean, imagine in South Africa. We've got 60 million people. If 30 million died, we now don't need to worry about electricity for 30 million people. Social welfare, we can double grants. 30 million is a lot of people. We can get more land, etc. 30 million is a lot of people. You can't no, it's a lot. But what I'm trying to say is... I, I see the point. You have, less to, you have fewer people to share the yeah, resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see the point. I mean, that's the logic of capitalism. And, of course. And white supremacy is like... They, sometimes they calculate... If we eliminate uh, 5 million Jews, oh. half of our problems are gone. 100%. But that's 5 million human beings, bro. Like, fuck that shit. Okay. But yeah, continue, sorry. So, so, so Thanos was going about this thing and what came out from that and Heath Ledger was the best villains are the ones where they are heroes when you look at the story from their perspective. Mm-hmm. So Nelson Mandela was a revolutionary and a hero from his eyes. He was trying to liberate the masses of black people in South Africa. From another perspective, it's this guy who's the leader of a terrorist organization. Yeah. Operation Tutula, these guys are destructive and it's anarchy. And you're like, who told you that? It's someone who's got your ear. So when it comes to Jim Jones, I, again, one plus one equals three. Charismatic white man, non-racialist. Yeah. Charis- he tells people we can build a self-sustaining off-grid community. And he goes and he does it, Orania. And they go and they build it. It becomes something great. Of all the years he's been preaching, of all the good work and charity he's been doing, of all the people he's inspired, mm-hmm. magically overnight, 
He gets people to murder themselves. The logic doesn't hold to me. And I ask, who told you the story? Where? Is it not consistent? How? Is it not consistent that he's so charismatic and has built himself a profile? Because when I when I've listened to some of his speeches, sure. and I'm shocked that a white person in 1960 in America could be so welcoming to all races yeah. in his current context. Yeah. And I think if I was impressionable, because I the story I'm 32. I first encountered that story when I was 18 or 17. Sure. And I was like, shit, this nigga is talking game. You're like, he's inclusive of black people at the time, sure. of course, with my 17-year-old logic. You see. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say or bring out is that he was building up a reliability profile. Sure. So that by the time he reaches the point where his end goal, what, what his end goal is, he's built up a profile. It's like Nelson Mandela, for whatever he is, if he was still alive today, he would easily convince 100,000 people to kill themselves. Sure. Because it's built up um, credibility over time. And know? that's and that's the narrative that you've bought into. That's why I'm, you no, defend no, I'm, it. I'm talking to you now. I know. I'm working it out. I, that, I know. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm working saying, it out. I'm saying... Counter to what you're saying. Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying you've built yourself to believe that some evil people have to build up charisma. And, and because you believe that story. Um, Nelson Mandela, like what I'm trying to do, found mm. invisible cloaks. One of them being non-racialism. Mm. That's why he died at 95 or however old he was. Because he could have been Jim Jones. He could have come out of prison and be like, no, fuck these whites, let, let's kill them. And the story we'd be hearing today is there used to be a terrorist in South Africa yeah. who went around killing people. And do you know what he also did? He got black people to kill themselves. And that's the story we'd be telling. And some people are like, no, but that's not what Nelson wanted. And you'd be saying, no, but... You see, he was charismatic and this was the story he sold. And I'm not defending Jim Jones. I don't know what the fuck happened there. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying I don't have the answers. I'm just saying I don't know if I just readily believe that Jim Jones, after getting people to build a self-sustaining ecosystem, knowing that capitalism hates that so much, that Jim Jones just asked people to murder themselves after doing all of that. Same with Osho in Wild Wild Country. Same with myself if I were to build an independent... Um, piece of land like Orania. Orania wins and it's protected. And even though it gets a lot of bad press, it wins and it thrives because it still works hand in hand with capitalism. They haven't fully gone off grid. Yeah. So I realized that because at some point I wanted to build my own Orania. And I realized I think it's more sustainable to be like Jews and Muslims and pretend you inter integrated with society. And then in certain neighborhoods, they'd be like, oh, this is a penniless neighborhood, but we do business with them and they're friendly people. Their kids go to our school, but then the indoctrination happens every day at home with madrasa and you tell people guys this is how we stay alive for longer yeah because when you study it historically if you extremely pull away from society they will say that people kill themselves because of you mm. i don't know the story uh, oh, yeah. but i will speak about isaiah yeah. shembe as a success story because isaiah also found gold nuggets uh to allow him to live for longer this is why i'm saying i don't want to die like puck so I'll go on a stage and be like, no, I'm not pro-black, even if I were, because I know it's going to save my life. Whereas the next guy's going to be like, no, fuck white people. And then I die. And like, yeah, it's because he was a rapist and this guy was a narcissist. And, the, you know, the signs were there, the red flags. I don't want the red flags. I want to be palatable to the people that run the world because I want to live for longer. But if I can shift humanity in a certain direction and hack some of the minds of the people that run the world, I will... I will have achieved my goal. Shembe. Um, Ushembe did well because he fused Christianity and African beliefs. And he, he also had his own Orania. People may not know, but he bought a piece of land uh, and people living there, self-sustaining. They had their own cows and whatever. The community grew too big, Thanos and resources. Um, and then from there, he was like, look, I can't sustain all of you. And he started grooming Shembe congregants to become disciplined, hardworking so that they got preference when Obas were looking for black workers in the farms and the factories. So uh, white people used to love hiring Shembe people. In the same way that even today, when you hire people from Mozambique, Malawi, who are Muslim, you know they're not going to come to work hungover because they don't drink. You know they're strictly religious. They just pray, but they work hard because there's something in Islam about earning your keep in heaven with Allah, yeah. etc. You know, so it was just that type of thing. And if society is like, no, man, these are good people, they... They help us stay rich or remain rich. It's chilled. So when Mandela came out, it was like, let's forgive. It's the Jesus story turned the other cheek. Oh, this is the Jesus story. Moses that led the Israelites out of Egypt. 
you know, and it became palatable. And wealthy white people who had benefited from apartheid and colonialism were like, we like this guy, keep him alive. Mm -hmm. And let's now paint the story of no man, the terrorism thing was a bad thing. And, and, and if Jim Jones had said, look, um, let's be non-racialist, let's whatever, but we have to work with society. We need to, I think they would have lived for much longer, but I don't know his story. All I'm saying is I look at those stories and I try to learn from them as case studies on what to do and what not to do. So pulling away and going to the Caribbean is not going to work for me because at any given time, someone can come and murder my people and then come and plant whatever and say, yeah, Penwell said. And today we've got deep fake, deep fake where they can make a video of me speaking, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's not me. And they can yeah. alter my audio and be I like, Penwell say, like this yesterday, yeah. God has called me to tell you guys that we must sacrifice ourselves just as Jesus sacrificed himself. We must follow in the steps of... It's like shit. I don't know, if it, yeah, I don't know if, it, if it existed at the time, though, uh, the manipulation of audio, uh, because I, I do remember specifically hearing Jim Jones in the last years convincing his congregants that this is what we are planning in the build up to the time where they poisoned multiple people. Um, I do remember hearing his voice, which was consistent with the voice and the face that I had been seeing when he was recruiting people, when he was explaining his vision towards the last. Um, months he was telling people that we are building. It's like, see, I go Christmas. We are going to Christmas Day sure. on Christmas Day in 25 got December. Says Bolala song. Yeah, but but I do get. I I, I completely understand you've, what you're you've saying. You've bought into the story. No, no, no. I'm, 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 no, it's fine. I'm about to say I completely sure. understand what you're saying as well. It, it could be bullshit. Sure. But I I I remember that there was for me there was a portfolio of evidence that made me believe it. Okay, because there were voice skips um, of when they were in the Caribbean. Sure. And, up, and building up to the to them killing themselves. Same thing with the people in Englobo. Um, sure. There were children of the people that died. The police sure. station, you could see the dead bodies. Sure. And those niggas continuously said, even in court, that we are sent by God to do A, B, C, D, and sure. this is why we did this, and there's nothing wrong. And they were saying it in court. Are you Christian? That, no, no, no. I don't believe in all of that shit. Uh, I don't believe in any form of organized religion. Do you believe in um, killing for the greater good? Mm, I haven't thought about that, but I, I, I have an instinct, like, as you were saying about 30 million people dying sure. um, as a means to an end because it will put less pressure on the country. Sure. My instinct is like, yo, fuck that. Because sure. I come from black and I know how it feels to be killed as a group of people, sure. whether we're being killed in Rwanda, whether we're being killed in the spaces that were created by apartheid, which is the townships, sure. and killing each other. We are killing each other 20,000 times per year, every 12 months in those spaces that were deliberately uh, created by apartheid. So my instinct is always, I always care for life. I, I don't know if I would get to a point where I, I, I vouch for people to be killed, particularly Ever. black people. You don't think anyone is worth killing? Particularly for black people in mass, no. Not, uh, there could be a case that you can explain mass, to mass me. Mass murderers, serial rapists, that's what I'm, people that's, who are killing groups but of I'm, people. But I'm, I'm explaining it. Like, sure. I don't think that I can agree with anyone who says black people must be killed in mass or, or even groups of people must be killed in mass, whether it's in Asia, Latin America. You, you, can't, get me, you can't convince me uh, to agree to the killing of people in mass. Now you what, can, what about a small group? 20? I was about to say, you can give me a context under yeah. which you can make me believe that that is the right thing to do, to kill people. I've thought about the correctional service, uh, the correctional system a lot. And I've, I've posed questions to people who would you, if someone comes into your house and kills your mother, mm. um, is it enough that they go to jail and they spend five years? What if they are corrected or they prove to you that they are corrected in two years? Mm. Why does it need to be 20 years? Why does it need to be 30 years? I don't agree or disagree with what I'm saying. I'm, I'm conscientizing it and I'm questioning it. What is the meaning of 15 years for someone who killed? Is that sufficient? Do we want that person to be corrected and changed? Uh, is there a potential that they could kill someone else type of thing? So I've, I've thought about those things. But it never occurred to me that I, I, I would want to agree with the killing of the person who killed my mother or killed me. You don't yeah. believe in that? No. I come from uh, a township which has the highest murder capital, which is the murder capital of South Africa. It has the highest murder rate per capita in South Africa. It's called Nyanga. Um, we kill ourselves there. Uh, on any given weekend in the hundreds mm. um, and we are always like in the top five in South Africa and I've seen well done <laughs> yeah, boy, like, yeah boy in Ninja yeah, boy. make and, the top five yeah boy jeez and it's, 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 and it's a consistent stat yeah. that we are always there so I grew up around murder I grew up around rape I've, I think I first saw the first person being killed when I was five years old 
Jeez. Um, you know, so I know that I'm capable of killing too because I participated in gang violence when I was a teenager. Um, sure. But I don't know that I, 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 I want to vouch for people being killed. I, 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 I don't like it. I think it's perverse. But I think that, as you explain, when we talk about people like Hitler or mass murderers, you do see that it is, human beings are capable of doing it. And whether I like it or not, that's, that's what happens in the world. But to answer your question, shit, I, I went in a roundabout way to answer your question, but I'm trying to justify that. I, I'm trying to also reflect of, on, on whether or not I've ever believed in killing other people at some point. And as I'm thinking through it, yeah. I don't think I've ever believed in that shit. I, and I'm, I'm averse to the idea of black people being killed in mass because of, of where I come from, because of our history in South Africa, and as a continent because of our history. It's not nice to see millions of black people being slaughtered because you can always be the next person. I want to paint a hypothetical situation. Sure. And this, like I said, I don't know the story in novel. Yeah, yeah. You've got a community where the police station is incredibly corrupt, where the same police are the ones helping drug dealers. The same police are helping human traffickers. The same police are providing weapons to bad people. When women get arrested, they rape them. Yeah. When other niggas get there, they beat them up, etc. And somewhere along the way, a group of people, we'll call them Operation Tudula, Realize that this police station is insanely corrupt. That's the story of Batman, Batman and Gotham, by the way. And they're like, we're taking it upon ourselves. We were, one of us was sleeping. I had a dream from my ancestors, if you're ancestral, or from God. Saying, you are the chosen one. You are the one that's going to be sent to clean this town. You are going to be Batman mm -hmm. and clean up Gotham. And to do that, you are going to find disciples. Six other guys with you who are going to believe in your vision and you're going to be the Noah of the day mm -hmm. and you're going to rescue this whole place. You're going to be Nelson Mandela of your community. And the best way to do it is to go to the institution that is destroying your community and that's the police station. And you go out and you tell a nice story and you convince six other guys and the seven of you and you're like, we are going to be God's angels and we are coming to help clean the world. And you go and you murder those people. Same way America bombed Afghanistan and Iran. Same way they're bombing Somalia now. Mm -hmm. Same way they're helping Ukraine to fight Russia. We're doing good because these people are evil <laughs> and they're bad. Do you understand that type of psychology? That's, that's the interesting thing for me. I get it. I, to I totally understand um, why people do that shit. Because it, you, you need to get yourself to a place where you convince yourself that that's, that's the way to go. Even though it's, it's futile, because you go to your police station, you kill people, the national police is going to come. And you're going to be killed, you're outnumbered. That's exactly what happened in, in Lobo. Um, of course, they didn't use the justification that there was corruption happening in the police station or they were being harassed. Mm. They didn't give any excuse other than the religious excuse that we are the seven angels, blah, 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 we rule. And that's where they got the balls of invading a police station. Sure. It's like, shit, you're going exactly where people have guns and you're going to shoot them. Sure. You know, that's a short-sighted thing to do. But I get what you're saying, and I get the question as well. Like, I understand that people um, can convince themselves that they need to do that. They're doing Even the right thing. If, yeah, they, they can convince themselves that they're in the right. Mm -hmm. Because I think Germans were convinced by Hitler mm -hmm. that he's right. Do you, think, do you think Hitler was wrong? Again, consistent to the idea that I don't believe in the mass killing of people. I would uh, no, 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 wrong. sorry, not the killings. Do you think he was wrong? Because Hitler was blaming the economic woes. Of, of, of the Germany Germans on the Jews. On, on the Jews. In, the, in the same yeah. way, a lot of black people in South Africa are blaming foreigners. Bla blame white monopoly capital in particular. Yeah. So black people are going to say the problem in this country economically is whites. Yeah. And then a Hitler figure comes up. We'll call him Julius Malima. And he says, let's kill the whites because they are the problem. And years later, they like, there used to be this dictator called Julius Malima, charismatic, who convinced black soldiers in South Africa to mass murder white people because he claimed the mm. economic issue in South Africa is white people. Do you understand that type of logic? I get it. I get and, and it frustrates me that people are easily convinced by shit like that. People can be convinced by anything. You are telling them that there's something called the coronavirus. It sounds like a flu-ish. It gives you flu-ish um, you know, symptoms. It kills you. Wear a mask. And they're not being told that a mask can actually potentially kill them more than the coronavirus. Sure. type of thing you know I, so I, get, I, I understand the logic but I think the comparison between Julius Malema and Hitler if he were to do that um, it would I'm not sure um, if I'm not educated enough on the build up 
in terms of what Hitler said to the Germans. I know that the, he, he created an excuse of Jews. These are your enemies as German people, mm. and they need to be exterminated. I know that, but I don't know what was the build up to it and what, what, what were the specific words he was saying. Sure. But I can completely understand someone was blaming white monopoly capital. Or about foreigners, the, as about, you were saying. Uh, uh, foreign, uh, mm. I, you see, I, I will know where I agree or disagree, what I agree or disagree with, with regards to people blaming foreigners or people blaming um, the white supremacist system, because there would be evidence that these people, most of the wealth in this country, even though they're 9%, is with them. I could buy into that idea, whether I'm right or wrong. If you point it towards foreigners, I'm saying to you, point me where foreigners own the majority of the mineral resources. Um, I live with white people. All of my neighbors here are white, mostly. Well done. Here, and, um, From Enyanga, top five to no, Ngamlas. Come I, on! I'm trying to make a point. <laughs> I see how they live. I, sure. I see, like I see, okay. Imagine says, I'm going to live with white people. I'm going even though they are 9% of the population. So I would, I would believe that. I would be more inclined to believe that uh, than the story of foreigners. Sure. Whether or not I would be inclined to take action is different because I'm a different human being. It's like um, I, I would purposely find a way to make money and create my own system, similar to, to yours, but I wouldn't want to have congregants. Um, but I wouldn't participate in the killing of people, massive killing of people, because I understand that I have skills, I'm talented enough that I can accumulate 10, 20, 30 million in my lifetime in the next 10, 20 years, and I can live my own life. I think the theory... And the action is bought by people who, or is usually bought by people who are in a state of helplessness. They think that if they kill those Jews, their lives will change immediately. I think that anyone who's a participant like myself and you in the system of white capitalism, and they see the potential that they could win in certain instances, um, I don't think that they have any interest in destroying I white agree. capitalism. Yeah, but something like that. That's what we call uh, gatekeepers, clever blacks. Who yeah. have become the buffer. Unfortunately, I, 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 I am. Whether I am not actively um, defending the system of white capital. Yeah. I know that it's problematic to our people. But I also have worked out that I'm not going to be able to save 30 million people. Yeah. Therefore, whatever I can, I accumulate and I participate in it. And that's it. Yeah, Do you but, also understand that the privileges we enjoy today is because certain black men were willing to kill? mass and the same privileges that white people had with apartheid and colonization was because a few white men were willing to kill en masse and that today you are a happy humanist and you want to protect and defend human life but it's only because you have privileges from the men that were willing to do those dark things mm -hmm. Ingobo, as an example hypothetical example so might be a healthier happier community now because the seven angels showed the cops that if you guys do this we're willing to take you guys out. And we've inspired other kids out there to know that the police are not bulletproof. Do it's, you acknowledge it's, it's your a, privileges a, are a result of people that as did I, things you wouldn't approve I of? I listen to that and I hear, I hear it as a provocation. I get, I get it, but I don't embrace it. Sure. I don't know if I agree with it, but I don't have enough time to think through it. Okay. Yeah, well, I get it and I hear it as a provocation. Okay. Um, you know, I would have to think about it in the context of how we got here as a country. I would never easily get myself to agree with that shit, that it is okay to kill mass. No, no, not people. that it's okay. That our privilege is a result of men that were willing mm. to, not that they did, mm. but that were willing to do that. That's why we have it. If they weren't willing to do that, we may not be able to live in the suburbs. Yeah, Ongan. but that, that shit is, is, I don't know, um, it is such, the ratio of people who are able to make it in the white system um, is such a gamble that I would never embrace such a system. The okay. number of black people relative to us as a population um, that make it in the white system is such a small, tiny number. It's disproportionate that it's not a system that I would vouch for because could have been anyone sitting in my chair or in your seat. Of course. You know, um, but it's always a tiny percentage. It's a tiny percentage of men that participate in the JS Johannesburg Stock Exchange. It's a tiny percentage of black men and women uh, who are counting themselves as millionaires. You know, so it's not a system that I would support because of that. And of course, because of its atrocities, you know, I wouldn't support that shit. But you, I like the fact that you provoke. I provoke? Li I, like the fact, <laughs> I, I like the fact that you agitate. You, you force people to think. I, I know that, um, and I get frustrated with the audience as well. It's like, shit, man, can you not, can you not be able to hear multi-layered statements and think through them? Yeah. You know, you don't have to pay money to think through things. 
you know i think that the audience sometimes will take some of your statements um and deliberately interpret them out of context of course you know but i think you you are a great provocateur i'm um, building i'm building a very thick skin and i'm building i admire joe rogan you yeah. spoke about joe rogan oh, i yeah. admire joe rogan very much uh, i admire dave chappelle I love Dave. I'm admiring Elon Musk because what I'm learning from them as case studies is mm. it's possible to say supposedly uncomfortable and politically incorrect things and still not be cancelled. Yeah. So I'm trying to learn from them. And like I said, I want to try and own as much of. So if people are going to be like, yeah, Ben, I'll admire Hitler. I'll be like, yeah, yeah, Jews won't do business with you. And I'm like, well, if the Jews are stupid, it's fine. I'm not look, really looking for the Jews. I'm looking for whoever's their leaders because they... When you speak to rabbis, when you speak to proper Christian leaders, when you speak to heavy political heavies, they fully understand because they understand psychology, anthropology, sociology. Mm -hmm. They are the people that build the systems. Everyone else will just be like, oh, so Nelson's not a terrorist today. He's actually a hero. Oh, so we don't need masks anymore. Mm -hmm. We can walk around. All of a sudden. People are just zombies. So yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, and I agree with you in terms of people being robots and zombies. They are vessels, basically. Yeah. You feed them information and they blurt it out. I think even when you interrogate the system that gets you to be certified um, as a PhD or yeah. BCom, whatever, it's regurgitation. Of know? course. I'm telling you to, something today, can you remember it next week? Sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, when I was asking you about cults, I wanted to get the end goal of your community. Yeah. And I, I, I linked it with tragedy because I know that some cults have a tragic end goal whether or not you believe the official narrative of what happened. But people die. History is um, a great blueprint and a memo for life currently mm -hmm. because human beings have built this world where history repeats itself. Yeah. People believe it's a natural thing. It's not natural. It's because it, get pu it gets pumped into our heads. That's why every new kid who's trying to be a revolutionary sounds like Malima and Malima sounds like Peter Mukaba and Mukaba sounds like Mandela and because obviously you get pumped with the same sort of stuff. Um, the danger of Jim Jones compared to what the Christian Crusades did in murdering millions in the name of Jesus Christ is incomparable. Thought about that too. The Muslims have murdered hundreds of thousands in the name of Allah. No one will speak about that because it's not a cool story to tell and because they're old religions. Yeah. But Jim Jones, assuming he did what he did, is a bad story. Let's highlight that. He's a cult figure. No one is like, but Jesus and Christianity are cult figures. Muslims, according to American media, suicide bombers. <laughs> they go out there, Allah, what, what. No one is going to speak about the soldiers in America who are deep Christians, who are like, I'm doing the work of God. God has sent me to Afghanistan to go and make sure that we fight the insurgents. <laughs> You're like, are you fucked? <laughs> you know? So if you look at history, you realize some of the things people are scared of, the things that you believe in. When you like, no white people today no we have to respect the constitution and the rule of law and i'm like you realize these laws we have today are a culmination of the colonization and oppression and exploitation mm. of what you guys have done to lawlessness us lawlessness and illegality when you speak about no we need a stable economy this economy was built off the exploitation of black people and mm. the i don't like using the word stealing but the stealing of black land and black resources so how dare you and if black people come and reverse do that all of a sudden, it's rule of law. And what laws were you guys following when you were doing what you were doing? So I don't really care when, if people are scared that I'm going to build a Jim Jones town. If anything, I can go on Twitter. And if people are like, you're Jim Jones, I'll be like, yo, thank you so much. Because Jim Jones was amazing. Like, oh, so you're going to kill people. I'm like, well, I'm not planning to. But hey, who knows? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> and it becomes a funny joke, but it's meant to protect me in the long run. Um, so the people that are joining your community... Join it knowing that there's always the potential that mass murder could occur. No, I, I don't have time for mass murder and suicide. I think that's so boring. And I think it's so outdated and so outplayed. I want people to know that if ever I'm accused of killing people, if ever people accuse me of saying I convince other people to commit suicide, mm -hmm. I want my hardcore fans, like Dave Chappelle hardcore fans, like Joe Rogan hardcore fans to be like, fuck you guys, you're lying. Joe Rogan is not trying to tell people they must die from COVID. That's stupid. Yeah. You know, the guy's just questioning, is this thing really real? Um, are there alternative... That's all he's doing. Dave Chappelle is just asking a question about transgenders. And do I really need to say you're a woman when you had a dick yesterday? I don't know. 
So to call him transphobic is just fucking lazy thinking. I want that type of protection where if I say Christian crusades and people are like, yeah, but that Jesus Christ didn't endorse that. And you're like, okay. You know, and when people attack the next person, like, no, Nelson wasn't a terrorist. It was just, it was a misunderstanding. I want that type of protection. Um, I want the world to be better. I don't want to do it at the expense of extremity. I want capitalists to not be disrupted because they've obviously built a great system for themselves. But I'd like them to please let go of some of the people that are really struggling in capitalism. So for me, I want to win the poor, helpless, disgruntled. And I want to help the privileged. Because to the poor, disgruntled, I can help you overthrow the government. But that's not what I want. I want you to build your own government and your own space to win. Because they did it. So you can do it too. To these guys who don't want to let go of the land for people to... I'm like, do you enjoy paying high tax? Fuck no. Don't you think blacks are lazy and they're chowing grants? Brew. Fuck, I hate grants. I'm like, let me take them off your hands. So I want to win both sides and I want people to just live better. My whole ammo, my whole objective is to be a virus. I want to be Agent Smith in the Matrix. <laughs> and there's an argument, going back to movies, there's an argument that Agent Smith is actually the one and not Neo. You know, if you look at the work Agent Smith was doing. I want to pierce through the systems that have been created and plant these seeds. I'm very scared of engaging people because I've realized the power of language and talk that oh, yeah. I can make people do certain things. I just want to plant a big enough seed so that when Cyril Ramaphosa says lockdown, mask, people can have critical thinking and be like, just because my doctor said this is good for me, I must remember that a doctor is just a student. It's just a kid that went to school for seven years that read textbooks. That's all it really is. I must remember that. Trevor Manuel gave us a clue and people missed it when he got an adverse uh, outcome, judgment with the old mutual case with Peter Moyo, the CEO. And he was like, a judge is just a man in a robe. <laughs> you know, he was literally telling us, guys, these are just human beings who have been yeah. given titles. But at the end of the day, you need to apply your mind. We need more critical thinkers, not to disrupt, destroy the world, kill the evil, bad capitalist, just to make the world better. I want to sit with a Bill Gates and Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or whoever. I want to sit with the Patrice at Dangote and just ask them, are you sure this is the best thing? Because it's cool now you're making a lot of money, but you might be killing your own clients in the long run. Don't you want your great grandkids to be super wealthy like the Oppenheimers? Give some of these people a bit more money so that they can come back and buy. Give them a little bit more land so that they can come back and like work together, collaborate. Don't that, just hoard what, everything. What would that make you be then? As you are describing your vision of what you want for your community and for yourself, yeah. what would that make you be? If you want to be around people that change the world or um billionaires and shit like that influential people what yeah. would you be then at that point so some of the people i truly admire who have had sustainable lives while influencing minds and straddling both worlds Sadhguru. Sadhguru gets invited to the world economic forum as a guru who lives off almost nothing yeah he doesn't care about money apparently nelson mandela got this right jacob zuma got this right which is one of the learnings for me don't have money but have money around you Sadhguru doesn't have money, but he's got an NPO, charity, that collects millions of dollars doing charitable work. Nelson was the same. Nelson wouldn't book a flight because, like, I can't afford it. But if you'll book the flight for me, I'll, I'll come there. You know, so I love Sadhguru. Uh, Nelson Mandela was a great success story. I don't want to go to jail for 27 years. I think there's a way to get around that. Um, Miles Monroe was amazing. I think towards the end, he became very dangerous because he started planting very dangerous seeds of self-empowerment whenever you start teaching people that god is inside and not outside oh, yeah. it becomes extremely dangerous because the whole concept of an external god is that this is god this is what he thinks mm -hmm. this is how he reacts etc and um Sorry, just... no no stress no don't stress we are actually the um, host. <laughs> Can I speak to camera? Hi, guys. Are we cut? No, I haven't cut. Oh, no, let me chat. Can I chat to camera? Sure. Ah, solid. Uh, I was speaking about Nelson Mandela. God. No, but I, wanna, I've, I have to say this to Uncle Lego. It was part of a conversation. But, anyways, I hope you guys are good, man. This guy is such a horrible host. But uh, he made me really yummy coffee, so. I'm a fucking horrible host. 
I can carry on. Yeah, we can carry on. So I was saying I've learned from people like Cabo Nelson. Sorry about that too, everyone. No, it's chilled. We're human beings. I think the beauty of a podcast like this is that we can be natural. Yeah. And we're not like on whatever. Um, Nelson Mandela was a great success story. Miles Monroe was becoming dangerous. And I was talking about an external God because as long as the people who control the world control what God is and what God thinks and what he likes yeah. and you, it's easy for you to be a zombie. Once I give you full power, it's the reason why our politicians will never give us a schooling system that truly empowers. That empowers us. The whole concept of empowering you means I disempower myself because yeah. you can do for self. Then you'll go and build a Jonestown because you don't need to buy from the retail stores. You don't need to buy from the farmers. You don't need to. You can do. And you become very dangerous. And if you succeed, you start inspiring other communities to do the same. And we cannot have that. So, yeah. but Miles Monroe was amazing. So I look up to those guys and I want to be something like that. I just want to be a voice. I want to be a thought. And because I want to be God or I am God, I want people to be able to reference me and no one else. And to be like, why do you, why are you exercising? Why do you eat well? Why are you doing this? You're like, no, because Penwell says, Penwell, the same way a doctor oh. will reference a, a textbook, the same way someone will reference a Bible, the same way someone will be like, yeah, but on News 24... I want people to be like, Penel says we must remember that God is inside. Yeah, the nation and of Penel Islam... says we must grow our own food. Sorry, um, just on that, the nation of Islam encourages um, black Muslims in America to believe themselves as God. God is within Yeah. Um, and I think that that's a very powerful... If you look at uh, the human beings that emerge from those kind of organizations, when they believe that God is within them, um, they become better, more responsible human beings because they take better responsibility for their lives they don't think that anyone external has control over their lives and i think that it's very interesting when people refer to themselves as god because i think they they they, they take control um they do what would be considered as godly yeah you it's know. in the bible as well even though christians are the funniest creatures if christians or if people that follow christianity were hardcore they would be amazing human beings but the hypocrisy mixed with modern living just makes it a fucking mess Mm. Jesus wasn't into materialism he wasn't building churches Jesus was about peace and love and uplifting the poor he was about chilling with what we call unsavory characters having conversations challenging the priests of the day that's why the king Herod and them had to kill him because he was doing exactly that he was going around uplifting and liberating minds and capitalism fucking hates that so they destroy people like that so even from the Jesus story I don't want to be crucified like Jesus so I need to find a way to get a King Herod to be like, okay, we like him because we can capture him somewhat. We'll give yeah. him a bit of money, make him drive a nice car. Yeah. But he'll still do his little, hey guys, peace and love, love thy neighbor. But then we come and we fucking have hot wings and shit together. So I need to learn from some of those stories. Because the people at the top as well, the other thing we need to understand is they're also human. They found themselves in unique positions, whether they built a Facebook, a Google or their parents are, dis they are descendants of John D. Rockefeller or J.P. Morgan. They found themselves in unique positions where they can flex in the world. And they're making a lot of fuck-ups. And I'm also appealing to them that, hey, bro, I think you're kind of fucking this shit up and I think I can help. Because they actually are willing to listen. Every time we demonize them, vilify, when you say, Paul Gates is a mass murderer, why would he listen to you? But if you're like, Bull, I, I think you're trying to do great work in Africa, you know? And I think sometimes we must... You know, to help the Africans, like, step back a little bit, see how they do things. Maybe let's do this. That's how you start hacking his mind and you actually end up doing more good for your people than the person who's just, fuck Bill Gates and people like him who are killing us. They are human beings. They think they're doing right. Again, the best villains are the ones where they are heroes from their perspective. So when you speak to them, you need to speak to them from their perspective of, I can see what you're trying to do. You're trying to help the world. If Bill Gates has an agenda to kill the world, it might be a Thanos thing saying, but guys, we're overpopulated. I need to then go and tell him, but you know, Bill, if we were to actually put all human beings in one place, they would fit in Los Angeles. So we've got a lot of land. I think what we need to do is we need to spread them out. In South Africa, for example, residential land is only 1% 1, 1 of the land we inhabit. Is it? Yeah, so we've got gang that's, land. That's interesting. But people live in squatter camps and yeah. flats and yeah. it's because we've been sold this rubbish. And it's like, no, spread it out, guys. The same way Santon City was built on farms, you can go build Santon City. Sol Kirzner built Sun City in the middle of nowhere. Las Vegas in Nevada was in the fucking middle it's of the, in the desert. desert. The challenge is up to you guys to now go and build your Las Vegases and your pyramids and your 
there's too much land and the world needs more leaders it needs more innovators so that other people can then gravitate to where you are that's all and you tell the capitalists capitalists you've got your five million customers you're doing well let these guys go away because all they do is they commit crime and they steal and they rape your daughters let me take them off your hands that's all do you want to carry on living like this where your kids are fucking scared to be in the streets no you want to live like you're in canada where you've got no fucking fences and it's happy days i will give you walt disney but you have to give me these people stop hogging them just because your friend makes money off private security and you're making money off prison tenders it's cool but i think you can make more money if i take them off your hands That's what is all. the uni- unifying vision though for yourself because i'm 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 listening to you speak and I listen to some of your live videos and you speak a lot of things. Yeah. But what the fuck do you want to be though? Uh, you want to be that guy that does that and you influence influential people. Sure. But what the fuck do you, what, what, what do you want? Do you think you're going to have enough time to be able to do that plus run a cult if you have a cult or a community? Do you think you have a, a clear end goal of what Penwell is in the next 10, 25 years? So... All of us are born blank pieces of canvas. Yeah. And then we're pumped with what our dreams are meant to be and our goals. Get 100% and distinctions in matric. Cum laude university. Doing a great course, STEM, subject, actuary, engineer. Get a high paying job. Find a great partner, get married. Uh, have great kids that go to top private schools. Um, be as rich as you can. Travel the whole world. Uh, be there for your grandkids and your trust fund and then die. Some of us get polluted somewhere along the way and then you get this moment where you're like, what actually is the purpose of life? Yeah. And in trying to answer that question where I am currently is the purpose of life is just to live and to try and keep yourself with busy with what you call a meaningful struggle until you die. So there is no major big purpose. I must liberate the blacks. I must make the world. There isn't. We're going to die. Just have a good time. So for some, a good time is cocaine. For some, it's, I want to fuck girls in Dubai. For some, it's, oh, I want to go to America and become a fucking movie star, if that stimulates you. I want to be the greatest baller of all time if you're LeBron. It's fine. That's your little meaningful struggle. Um, For me, because I've kind of studied the world as deeply as I could, none of it really matters. And I think where I thought there isn't stuff that hasn't been fully explored, it's in the human mind and how far it can go. And when I looked at the various tools of mind control, um, religion is strong. Of course, money is there as well. Money is stronger than religion, by the way. People people will do ungodly things for money. Um, And I realized, you know what? All this other stuff is boring. I can be very rich, can travel to other countries, can have lots of kids. Um, And I'm like, I think the idea of unplugging minds that have been stolen and colonizing them to be my zombies i think that'd be fucking cool so what i'm currently doing is literally a social experiment i don't know if i'll get bored at some point and do something else Mm -hmm. but this is what i'm doing for now because human beings like language and boxes and labels i have to give it names so it's called a religion it's called a community it's called penalism named after me and i'm trying to make the world a better place but fundamentally i'm just trying to enjoy life um and if I change at some point, that's cool. If I decide to be a dollar billionaire and help other billionaires to carry on oppressing the poor, <laughs> cool, but I hope not. Um, I'm enjoying meeting human beings and helping them become critical thinkers. Ultimately, if, if I carry on along this trajectory of this social experiment, um, I want to have my own religion with a community of maybe a million people around the world that have communities of, I'm a penalist, I live in Tokyo, in Japan, Hi, I'm a penalist. I live in um, I live in Canada, in Toronto. Hi, I'm a I believe in penal as my God, and He guides the way I live. And I will then add that people come with their companies, Batu, Drip, Google, Tesla. I'll be a guy that came up with his own religion, Shembe, Olihanyan, and ZCC Buddhism, mm. and it'd be like you know, I'm a penalist. I fuck with this guy. There was a guy in Africa who came with these crazy ideas, and. I live according to his principles mm. and that'll be my Bob Marley contribution to life. How would, how would, how would it affect you if you end up being a regular normal person? If in the next 10 years um, or if in the next 50 years of your life um, you end up being an employee 
who struggles to pay a mortgage bond, one car, the house, swimming pool, and that's it. Like, how would that affect you? Do you think it would have a, a negative? I think if I were to confine myself to the idea of working and giving up eight hours of my time, yeah. I would kill myself in the next two years. Jeez. And I'm not... So you don't need Jim Jones. You just need a nine to five. I, <laughs> uh, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Like, if I were sure. to give up myself to a nine to five, sure. I, would, I would kill myself in the next two years because that's not me. I will never work. I will never, I will never submit myself to the idea of working for anyone else, sure. giving up my eight hours per day. That's what I'm saying. So Jeez. my question to you is, how do you think it would affect your mental health or your idea of yourself if none of these things that you're trying to describe ever happened and yeah. you were confined to trying to pay your mortgage, trying to work five hours or six hours a day? I wonder how many people... Uh have employment as their Jim Jones. That is the cause of their suicide. Yeah. You know, we vilify Jim Jones, but we won't vilify employment, which yeah. is murdering a lot of people's minds. I would kill myself. Um, I'm very privileged and I embrace that very much. I was raised largely by a single mother who was a school teacher. She raised three kids. She had a lot of debt. I had to get in as fast in first year. And then luckily I got a scholarship because I was smart nyana. You know, with an auditing firm, Ernst & Young. Um, worked in banking. Um, and then I decided to become an entrepreneur as well. I failed. I've had car repossessed. At some point, I had 12 vehicles. I lost all of them. I had cows. 17 cows, I think. 40 pigs. You know, I thought I was building my little Dangote empire. I've been heartbroken. Um, females that I cared about in my life broke my heart to pieces. Um... I think because of those sort of experiences and also studying my mom's story from rural to township with my dad to suburban and studying other human beings, I spend a lot of time in townships and in squatter camps. I do not fear poverty at all. Um, I'm a minimalist and there's rich minimalism and there's poor minimalism. Poor oh, yeah. minimalism <laughs> is I have one meal a day because I can't afford it. <laughs> Rich minimalism is, I have one meal a day because it's good for my system. Jack Dorsey. <laughs> uh, so, I'm not scared of poverty. Um, I admire animals, in particular chimpanzees, very much. They don't have schooling. They don't wear clothes. They don't have cars. They don't have homes. And they're not struggling with the mental illnesses we have. They're not feeling like they need external validation of, I wear pep. <laughs> they wear fuckle. And they're relatively content. So... I don't fear that. When my business crashed, uh, 2016, I think it would be in 2018 where I dusted off my CV and I went back to work for Absa Capital for nine months. Um, it was a great experience. I was getting good money. Is it? I was back in corporate. I was there for nine months. Mm. But I was like, ooh, this is a privileged life. People are drinking lattes and you're like, mm. and I was working in Santon, Alice Lane. And I was like, as nice as this life is, I'm happy with struggle. You know, so... I don't fear ever go, going back to employment because I've done it before and then I left afterwards. So it, 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 it's something that you would easily go back to if your condition or situation forces you to go back. To. Yeah. Um, I've had my daughter study in a colored neighborhood at a crash that is an NPO, mm -hmm. which is free government. Uh, I was contributing 300, I think, a month and donating whatever because compared to the 1.6 per month I was paying before, I was like, this is fucking, you know. Um, I've tasted somewhat struggle. And even with the little struggle I've tasted, I'm like, this is nothing. I'm not living in a concentration camp. I can go where I want. In my poverty, I was still flying around the country. I was eating yummy food. Um, to answer your question of how would I feel if I was a normal person, as long as I get to choose and control that narrative... I'm happy. The problem is if circumstance forces me to do that and I find myself feeling some type of way, mm -hmm. I'm building myself into becoming very resilient and strong. I want to be, I want to be able to live in the wild, for example. Oh yeah. I want to be able to live fully off grid and by off grid, I don't mean solar. I mean, not having electricity. Like I do mang vagashelo koko, a long drop and a lamp, an oil lamp. Um, 
And I want to do the same with my kids. I want my kids to be comfortable enough to be like, we might be super rich, but we're happy with nothing. And people don't understand that mindset. And it's a, it's a mindset that allows your family to sustainably remain privileged for a really long time because it's not about money. It's about work and skill and human relationships and whatever. You know, so I told myself at age 35, if I'm not where I want to be, I'll become a school teacher because my family is in education. My brother was a teacher, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. I got to 35. I was making 25,000 rand a month. And I was like, but that's how much teachers earn. I was like, so I don't need to go back. And I was doing it not really working. We kind of cheat. I, I've got a curse. It's a gift and a curse. I'm multi-talented. I don't take that for granted at all. Some people say I'm decent looking. I don't value looks much. I'm decent looking. I speak well. I've written books, 13 books that I sell. So at any random time, I get money from book sales. I can speak. I can sell shit. I can literally go out onto the streets and sell him more fire with Tusbuda. Um, I've got a great degree. I've got banking experience. I've run multiple businesses. I've got very wealthy friends that can hire me. They, they will be fucking honored to have me work for them. They're like, yeah. ooh, dog, thank you so much because they value my mind so much. Mm. I've built my mind, my body, my network into something almost bulletproof. I, I, my thinking goes to like if I lost my legs in an accident or at least my arms are still working so I can paint because I'm an artist as well. I've sold over 40 artworks. If I lose my arms, I'm like, can I still run? Is my voice working? Maybe I can become a motivational speaker with no arms and no legs. Um, have I lost my voice? Can I still write even though I can't speak anymore? Like, what can you take away from me that would completely destroy me? And maybe it's just my mind. If yeah. I'm brain damaged, maybe put me down then. Yeah. But, you know, but outside of that, can I, I can, can I, get burnt. Can I, just I can still it? go. I'm so sorry. My question is not necessarily linked to the poverty that you would experience if you were a normal person. Mm. It's linked to the idea that you, you, you seem to... I think it would, ma- it would matter to you to have the community of people that refer to you as a god and be influential. Essentially, what I'm asking is, what would happen if that doesn't happen and you have to be confined to just being a normal, regular person? How would that affect your view of yourself if you, if you don't become as influential as you'd like to be? Going back to the beginning, your first question, I think a true narcissist doesn't need external validation. I don't need anyone to like me. My mom worships me. And for many people, it's like, well, if my mom loves me, I don't need my mom to worship and love me. Mm-hmm. I... I I eat my own shit. I don't need anyone to follow me. I can have conversations with myself, which I do. Um, So I don't need the validation of people believing me and liking me. Mm. I don't need people to buy my books. I don't need people to buy anything that I sell. That's why, again, chimpanzee and living in the wild. I want to be comfortable to just be alone because I realize the purpose of life is just to live and have meaningful struggle. I don't, the purpose of my life is not to accumulate a million followers. That's just the social experiment I'm on now. Yeah. Until the next one, well, if this one does well, then I'll stay. That's all. Uti, immortal technique. Uti, the purpose of life is a life full of purpose or filled with purpose. Um, I want to segue into hip hop as as you just <laughs> described the purpose of life. I think of immortal technique um, saying the purpose of life is a life full of, of purpose. purpose. Um, in 1999. Uh, Dead Prez released an album called Let's Get Free. I Come know, on. I know you love hip hop. Um, in one of the songs there called Propaganda, it says, I don't believe Bob Marley died from cancer. 35 years ago, I would have been a panther. Yeah. Uh, it's At some point, Stickman says, I believe men made God out of in- ignorance and fear. Mm. Uh, in 1992, a tribe called Quest releases an album called people's instinctive travels and their paths in rhythm and one of the songs there says i don't need no ham and eggs because they are high in cholesterol jeez um and that's a hook actually yeah. and that's very rare in hip-hop that a hook would be like i don't need no ham and eggs because they're <laughs> high in cholesterol <laughs> you know um i say that to say that there is a point where hip-hop yes has gangster rap but is also uplifting to our people. Yeah. Um, I believe, and this is what I want to pose to you, that our hip-hop is hijacked 
by the system of capitalism and is used as a vessel for us to destroy ourselves. Yeah. So that reggae becomes dancehall and meaning is taken away from that art form and it's no longer uplifting us. Um, have you observed music and the change in music and the change in the kind of hip-hop and the kind of reggae? A hip-hop becomes crunk, becomes trap, um, and there's a change in the messaging to a point where if I'm sad and I'm of, on the verge of suicide, I can't listen to hip-hop. But when I was 14 yeah. and I wanted to kill myself, I could listen to hip-hop. That yeah. was in 2004. I could listen to hip-hop and it would um, dissuade me from killing myself. Boom. You know, um, I just want to pause you. Let's talk about music. Let's talk hip hop. But I, that's where I wanted to enter the conversation. I think, I think, I don't know if it was a conversation with Mac G or who the conversation was with, but I was asking the question of is podcasting going to be the institution hip hop used to be? Because hip hop used to be an institution. Very good question. You know, and you're very right. So, again, my mind being polluted along the way, because like I said, we're zombies. I'm a zombie myself. Yeah. I just, I'm colonized by different influences. Part of them being dead press. Talib Kweli, most deaf. So mm. I think when I left Matric, conscious rap fucked me up completely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they Schools is one of my favorite oh, yeah, songs yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> by dead press on that album. Yeah. Um, and you're very right. I mean, when we speak about people that were taken out, you start asking about Tupac because Tupac was planting seeds that are not healthy for a population that you want to control, mm -hmm. etc. So I wonder if podcasts are going to be the institution that hip hop used to be because a lot of kids don't have a space anymore. You know, hip hop used to be the place and you're very right. And it's sad for me. But then today you've got J. Cole and Kendrick and I'm not really sure where they stand. They are the 5% that the system usually allows just to give you the sure. impression that uh, it's a freedom of expression. Yeah. Because Adele Mutama said something interesting that um, during apartheid, um, pu black publications were allowed here and there to write critical um, editorial pieces sure. against the apartheid system. So you will always have that sprinkle of 5 to 10% sure. to give you the idea that, nah, hip-hop is free. Listen to Kendrick, yeah. listen to J. Cole. But if you, if you, if you observe the, the, the genre itself, you realize that 99% or 95% um, is, is, is garbage. Yeah. But entertaining garbage. It, it is really no, of entertaining. Course. Um, so about Kendrick, obviously, Nabo J. Cole are students of the game, of mm. hip-hop. Um, I don't know if they allowed, and you, you're raising something that's very interesting in my mind. I don't know if they allowed because they straddle the two worlds well, because I saw Kendrick at some fashion show wearing a crown with gold or diamond encrusted crown. Oh yeah, I saw that. Um, so I don't know if he's a, like Kanye, mm -hmm. conscious capitalist. He says conscious shit, but he's into making money and being a billionaire. Yeah. So I don't know if that becomes another invisible cloak for Kanye, the money thing. Um or if, to what you're saying, it's like, look... The system allows people... Uh, let, let's let radicals in, but yeah. a small amount that we can control. And at the same time, let's make them... Let's make their lives... Let's make Dave Chappelle's life such great hell that the next conscious kid is like, nope, I don't, don't want to take the hits that. Dave Chappelle takes. Yeah. So it, it's a very interesting dynamic. Um, you're asking about hip-hop. Hip-hop has definitely believe, changed yeah, and it's uh, been hijacked. Uh, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah music, exactly. Music yeah. has definitely been hijacked. And it's because of the people that run this world. And it's one of the things I try to explain to, in particular, black people. The white people that run South Africa, Africa, the rest of the world, are not stupid. You might argue with a white racist at the robot or in a shop and out-argue out him with your good English from white schools. Yeah, I fucking told that white guy... That's not the problem. That person is that person's a nobody. They're struggling like you. Mm -hmm. So if you think the white people you have access to are dumb, like oh, I got higher marks than all the white kids at school, those are not the people that construct the system. Those are not the architects. The architects are constantly studying minds like myself. With there are black kids out there who are thinking things maybe they shouldn't be thinking. You know, and they constantly preempting and trying to... I mean, no one has figured out why Bill Gates is buying up so much land in America. There's yeah. conspiracies, but yeah. we don't really know. They are preempting a lot of things. So these guys study where cultures are going. Oh, the kids are listening to this kid? Let's get him. Let's, put him, let's, let's make him super rich. Let's give him millions of dollars. This penal kid, let's say we'll help him with his penalism cult. 
We'll give him a church. We'll give him millions of dollars and what, what, and let's, let's manage him. And we'll make sure that we're like, no, doc, don't lose, be you. Be, we don't want to, we're just saying we're here to support in the background, but do your thing, dog. You know, you're like, sure. But again, because I study history in depth, I realize the people that captured the Nelsons and the whatevers in the past. I mean, Ubuntu Bigo, is, for example, was funded by European churches. People don't know that. The, the black, uh, black um, consciousness, consciousness community, movement. black community programs, I think may have been, because they had their own gardens. Um, they built clinics with Tom Ampela. Um, they were pushing self-sustaining Ubuntu Bigo when mm -hmm. he was isolated, I think, in the Eastern Cape. You know, they were funded by churches, for example. So they're like, no, we'll manage this guy. It's fine. When NPOs start working with you <laughs> and it's like, oh, we know these guys are very bad, but we'll fund you. We believe in you. are like, oh, I know good white people. Can't they sent by the same people? I study these things in depth, man. But yeah, it was captured. I wanted to say Dead Press captured me about Talib, um, a great cartoon series like The Boondocks, Love Aaron Macruder. Love The Boondocks. Yeah. So I think I got polluted and contaminated at that point. And that's why moving forward now, but that's good contamination. I can never be the same. Well, we'll argue that it's good. It's we'll argue. Good we don't know. It makes you question shit. Yeah. It makes you question shit. Um, today, I watch your Black Mirrors, Love, Death and Robots on mm. Netflix, even though you don't watch these things. But these are the things that still stimulate me very much. Movies like Ex Machina, uh, Christopher Nolan movies, Interstellar, Inception. You know, they still give me mental orgasms. Um... Was, the it world, necessary, the world? was it necessary to, to capture music? Um, what, yes. what was the power of hip-hop that they would need to capture it? I know what is, but maybe just expand to the audience why would the, would the system want to capture hip-hop at that time? Generally, whenever I'm confused about how the world is moving, I look to nature and animals in particular for answers because we model a lot of the ways we live. Even looking at technology like airplanes that are modeled from birds. And other things that are modeled from whatever animals do. The people who run the world, they commit a lot of evil. But they do play God and they realize what may and may not work. And some of the things that don't work is we can't all be business owners. We can't all be rich. Unfortunately, it's not sustainable. Um, we can't all be liberated. I mean, one of the things I've st I struggled with at some point is I was trying to liberate black people. And I realized you liberate minds and then they start floating and they're like, okay, where to now, Pen? And I'm like, no, you're free now. I'm like, no, but what do you mean I'm free? I'm like, no, you can be anything. Okay, anything like what? And you're like, hi, boo. No. But what's so the, a lo a lot you, of people... I would question whether or not that's liberation. If someone's, yeah, yeah, of course. If, if, if someone still is wondering what they should do next no, of course. if they are arguably liberated. Cause the, the concept of liberation is very difficult because we don't know what true freedom looks like. Yeah. You know, maybe Jim Jones and suicide, maybe that is liberation. But to us, it's not, for example. But we don't know what yeah, it looks I do like. Yeah, I do think that sometimes death is lib Some I think about killing myself maybe once or twice every month. As a, um, as a healthy thing? Not necessarily. No, I'm just saying like uh, going through it. Thinking through life. I think, not because of depression? No, I'm not depressed. Oh, I, okay. think, I think I, I don't enjoy being around people. I think people are insufferable, shit like that. Yeah, human uh, beings are a virus. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So I think I'm like, as you're saying, like yeah. maybe that, maybe Jim Jones influencing people to kill themselves if we were to believe. Was a form of liberation. Is, I, I do think like, I don't want to kill myself. Yeah. Let, let me make that clear. Sure. Before, but before I the algorithms think, pick up and they start sending you depression hotlines. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think, like, I do, because I'm not religious, I, sure. I, it's like, what the fuck would happen to me if I were to kill myself? Mm. Like, it's a very dangerous question, by the yeah, way. Yeah. Because like, if you entertain it, then it ends and it's. Yeah, over. I'm, I'm dope, bro. Like, similar to you, I'm talented. Like, I, I, I know the extent of, and the limitations of my mind. It's like, I think about it because I'm curious as a human being. Yeah. Someone else who's fearful, who's not liberated, might not even entertain that question. Of course, it's a know? very scary thought for, yeah. for a feeble mind. Yeah, yeah, for a feeble mind, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very scary thought. But I think, I think about that shit. But anyways, um, I, fuck, I cut you in the middle of no, it's talking chilled. about hip-hop. I'm so sorry about that. Um, you were just explaining to us the importance of why this, the powerful system would want to take away those kind of tools. Sure. Those, those tools that they see can potentially be used to liberate people. One of the things that hurt me was realizing that generally 95 to 99% of human beings will always want to be children and they will always want parents. And if you don't want to parent them, they will find parents elsewhere. 
It's in particular why I'm doing the social experiments because it's nice to liberate people, but then to what? And I'm like, okay, come to me. I'll be your God. I'll be your Muhammad. I'll be your whatever. And then listen to me because clearly on your own, you don't really know what to do. I unplug you from the system. You're like, leave school. Dead press. They schools can't teach us shit. <laughs> so you leave school and I'm like, stop eating fucking processed GMO. Okay, and then eat what? Stop wearing fucking Western clothing with strangers' names. Okay, and then wear what? And I'm like, shit, okay. These people clearly want to parent. And if I'm not going to parent them, they're going to go to the next person. So I'm mm. like, okay, I'll dress you. I'll feed you. I'll tell you how to educate yourself and, and, and. So that was very sad for me. So the guys that run the world may have realized stuff like that. And when I spoke about animals, I wanted to speak about lions mm. versus buck. You can't have a lot of lions and a few buck. Unfortunately, the maths just doesn't hold. You know, and for me, that's why capitalism will always be the way it is, at least. And human beings may will always be the way they are with hierarchies because there have to be a few lions and a lot of buck for the system to keep working, you know. Um, so I think they realized the power of hip hop and they were like, you know, we're going to get a lot of liberated minds, a lot of educated kids. They won't know what to do with themselves. We won't know what to do with them. So maybe let's let's infiltrate this thing and carry on with our program. It's been the most, I mean, as much as I have issues with capitalism, it's been the most sustainable program and model for now. The other ones are tricky. I mean, these things of equal pay for everyone, or everyone is equal. Equality is like the worst because we're just not capable the same. Yeah. I will outwork you. You will walk further than me. The next person will come up with better solutions. Yeah. And to now reward that with equal, it, it never works because I get demotivated, you get lazy. So... Capitalism also doesn't work. So we'll always need some mix of whatever. Um, and for me, especially with penalism, so penalism is not for lazy losers. I, that's one thing I want to highlight. That's what I love about the Jews. There's 70,000 Jews in South Africa. It's an elite club. If you love social grants and voting ANC for change, um, you're probably not going to like my shit because my shit is dead press shit. Um, I want leaders. I want to create the type of space where it's like, I'm going to, you're going to be a disciple of penalism and you're going to be Elon Musk somewhere else and you're going to be Jeff Bezos somewhere else and people are going to fucking suck your dick and they're going to think you fucking invented water. But that's because you and I are on the same wavelength. The rest of the zombies will do whatever you tell them to do. And, you, and part of what you need to do is identify the bricks that don't fit, the, the stones that the builder refused. You need to, be the person to be like, oh, okay, that kid is doing well at school. He's what, what, but he's just not fucking with the system. And you bring him closer. Because I also realize the people that run this world, they do have systems like that. And they're very hard to crack. But they're crackable. But the reason they're hard to crack is because they've realized if we let anyone in here, they will destroy the world. If we let any black kid who claims to be conscious teach them how to build nuclear bombs, they will destroy the whole fucking planet. Oh, yeah. So make it as difficult as possible. Stretch their brains till they break. Let them rebuild their minds and then let them come find us. And as soon as you get there and Bill Gates is like, fuck dog, welcome. And you're like, Bill, I've gotten to your table. And it's like, actually, I'm not in charge. I'm just, I'm the Cyril of the elite. I'm the face. That's why everyone's like, Bill Gates, Bill. it's actually not me. Here's the family that you need to meet. You're like, fuck, fuck. And they're like, welcome. It took a lot for you to get here, but now you'll understand why we do the things we do. Yeah. Because humanity needs to be kept in check and we need to play God. In, in different words, I did say that. Um, I'm seeing that we're almost two hours into it. Jesus. We'll have, we'll have a conversation another time, but let's wrap it up maybe in the next 10 minutes. Um, in different words, I did say that to Anil Mutama that I don't think that the capitalist system can be defeated. I think that they've sophisticated themselves to a point where they know what we're planning against them. Um, they, are all, they are also able to make sacrifices monetarily uh, that in order to defend their trillion dollar industries they can buy out some of us who are plotting against them yeah and five million because that's it's oh, nothing to them so cheap you know um so i nami i have this fatalistic outlook which we would never defeat it so now that you've identified that that is the possibility it's not going to happen uh, what do you do next but i want to i want to wrap up this now um with something else um surveillance how do we deal with that? So social media, surveillance, um, phones, technology. Um, I think there's absolutely nothing we can do 
and Edward Snowden told us this, there's nothing that we can plan without um, the system presiding over us knowing exactly what we're doing. Yeah. Um, they have... Um, we have to accept cookies on every website. Sure. You know? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, we have to accept the terms and conditions to have a Facebook account and shit like yeah. that. It's very interesting. I don't think that we could ever win against a system like that that knows so much about us. Edward Snowden was telling us that uh, the phone um, next to us like this is yeah. recording the conversation or there's always a possibility that it's recording the conversation. Even if it's off. Yeah, because <laughs> even with the applications sure. that you you download on the phone. It will ask, when you use it for the first time, it will ask, do you allow us the permission to use your photos? And I always ask, like, why would you need... But I, I would say, I say allow, because sure. I want to use it. Of course. You know, um, have you thought about that? Have you, do you agree with the idea that it's, pos it's, it's possible that every single time we're speaking, we're being recorded, every single time uh, we're, we, we log on to Facebook, Instagram, uh, we are being recorded. Not that someone is listening in because that's impossible mm. with 7 billion people, but yeah. there's always a portfolio of evidence against everyone with the usage of these phones. Um, I want to finish off on capitalism. So sure. you're very right that um, people that are coming up are very easy to buy out and very cheap, <laughs> very yeah. cheap. Um, the people that refuse to be bought get killed. Yeah, you can kill uh, them easily. Such a simple fix. Yeah. Um, I noticed the same thing with the Facebook because they, they block me for like 30 days at a time. And I'm like, but I generate so much traffic. And you realize for Facebook, Facebook's propaganda and conditioning, they're willing to lose 2 million, 5 million rebellious posters and users on their website because they need 99% of the people to be programmed in a certain direction. Yeah. The fact that I drive traffic, my traffic with 140,000 followers, that's fucking insignificant. They can lose me. They can delete my account. So capitalists are the same. They're like, this guy might ignite something and we've seen historically what happens. We could lose this. It could shift this. When a Jesus character comes in, you know, so let's keep this in check. Let's control this. Um, so yeah, they, they either buy you out and I'm getting myself ready to sell out. Um, it's one of the things I'm oh, yeah, preparing we've myself to, for. We've spoken to this about the Rob Hatsoff and those yes. kind of characters. Have you met him? Yes, twice. And, and I, I'm hoping to do an interview with him hopefully in the next few weeks. Oh, nice one. Um, yeah. But like the conversation is about you integrating yourself with him and his system. What was the conversation about? Um, I don't know how deep Rob is uh, in terms of influence. Is he a billionaire? I don't know. Because the thought the articles out there, say that. Yeah, the thought out there is that he is. You a said billionaire. you believe in portfolios of evidence. The articles say he's a billionaire, yeah. so he must be. I don't know if he's a billionaire. Uh, I know his grandfather built an amazing company in Anglo Fall. Uh, and all the other Anglo subsidiaries. Uh, in terms of him personally, I don't know. Um, assuming assuming Rob Harsoff is trying to capture me and that he's smart, it would not make any sense at all for him to ever offer me money or to buy into anything. And these are the things I'm learning. Why not? So Bill Gates is not going to meet Trevor Noah and be like, Trevor, you're doing such great work. I want to buy you. I want you to be a vessel for our agenda. <laughs> what? You know, these guys will be like, you know, Kuleg, I'm a huge fan of your podcast. I do your, I think you do amazing stuff. I know you're a minimalist. I fuck with your shit. I agree with you. Human beings are a fucking virus. You know, if you need any support from us, please let us know. We're going to tell our friends. I'm Paul Gates. Invite me on. I think your, your followers will be very happy. And you're like, oh, fuck, I'm getting Paul Gates. And you get excited. You know, and like I said, because they understand the power of conditioning, they don't need to tell you to be conditioned. But now we're friends. You can't talk shit about me. You've met my wife. You've met my kids. I've opened doors for you. I don't ask you to do anything. I'm not like you can't say that. You are going to decide on your own. I can't talk shit about Bill Gates because he's been so good to me. His wife cooked me a nice meal. Mm -hmm. I'm friends with his kids. I've met so many of his great people. Like, these are actually good people. And then I laugh because I'm like, they won. You know, so I... I I believe Rob Harsoff, like everyone else in the world, especially privileged people, has an agenda. And he's trying to find like-minded people or people that can assist with their agenda. I'm hip-hop, and he's trying to infiltrate me yeah. so that when I speak out there, uh, I hopefully plug into his frequency. But these are assumptions. It's not just him. It's everyone else. I yeah. do a podcast with DJ Spoo. DJ's got, DJ Spoo's got whatever his own agendas are, whether he's aware of them or not. And he doesn't want me going out there and saying... 
People must stop drinking energy drinks. They bad for you. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. what the? F- are you fucked? Yeah, yeah. I think you know what I mean. Yeah, but I, he won't ask me to say that for sure. I he get won't it. say promote more I get fire. It, I, th- I think you've had you've you've said that in your own videos in your own time, and it's consistent with your message: taking yeah. care of yourself, of exercising, course. and of shit course. like that. That energy drinks are shit. I think Slick Talk even said that as well. Yeah. But I also uh, I also understand the predicament that you find yourself sure. in. Sure. You know, the last thing you would want is to affect the bread of your nigga. The of course, you work with and all the and time. again, it's like the unplugging thing. If we tell people to stop drinking more fire, now we've cu- killed a South African business, South African jobs, the kids about hustling shower in the street, and now people are gonna go buy Red Bull and Monster, and you're fucking making other people. What the fuck? So it becomes a catch twenty two. Yeah. But the bottom line is, um, for me, I have my. This is why it's important for me. And I sat with the leader of Afri Forum, and they were like, unlike other groups where. We say, what, did, what do you guys, let's say Operation Tutula says, what do the people of Soweto want? We will help you. Afri Forum is like, this is what we want. And if you align with us, we can work. So with me and Rob, me and Sbu, me and the next rich, powerful, influential guy, I'm like, this is what I stand for and this is what I'm trying to do. If you're willing to assist me, let's work. I don't care if you call the capturer or your bull, I don't care. If you'll help me. For me, I have to be on my toes of, I know this person is trying to capture me in various ways. How do I manage that? And if I feel uncomfortable, because my brain works like that. I work with energy. If I feel funny, I pull out. eh? I have people offering me money. Come work. You can consult with us. We'll pay you 100,000 a month. I'm like, no, thanks. Why? You don't you want to, you drive a Taz. I mean, I'm like, no, my Taz is fine. I don't need the money because I'm not here to be. And I know you're trying to see my value system. Where do I stand? But I was trying to say I'm, I'm building myself to sell out because I want to live for as long as possible. I don't want to die. And I don't want to die for blacks. Blacks are like the worst thing you can ever die for. I'd rather die for like Jews. I want the Jews to send me to be Cyril and then I get assassinated. I don't want to die for blacks. If you look at the track record of people that died for blacks and the fact that blacks have done fuck all for them but quote them and be like, yeah, I'm a big oist. Hey, get the fuck out of here, man. I don't want to die for blacks. I'm preparing myself to sell out because I'm currently not comfortable with selling out. But I want to sell out as long as it's in line with my agenda so that, again, I want to own the disses. Yeah, but you sold out. And I'm like, yeah, ish, you guys are right. Because these are my friends. I'm, I'm the new Musi Maimani. I'm the Musi Maimani of podcasts. I want to own it and be like, okay, now that we've agreed that I'm Musi and I'm Herman Mashaba, let's work. You guys know where I stand. I've got a white wife. I hang with rich white people. I'm obviously a mouthpiece for the white agenda, but how can I help you guys get jobs? How can I help these white people give you guys funding for your business? How can I get these white people to open doors for you overseas so you can thrive? Let's have that conversation. We've accepted, I've sold out, on it. Sure. I work for whites, sure. I'm trying to kill blacks, whatever. How can I help you? Because we've gotten that out of the way. And people are like, but he said he's sold out, so what can we really do? Yeah, I mean, for me, the reason why it's so easy for me to ask you that question is because you've said it on the videos. Yeah. I've watched your live videos and you said that you're looking for Rob Hetsoff to uh, capture you. No. Something like that. I, I've, I've listened to it. Trust me. No, I hear you. I hear, I've, no, I've, I, was I've, I've I was having I was having a conversation. I think I remember that live. I was having a conversation about being captured. So Yeah, you may have made you may have been making an example sure, for people sure. like Rob Hetsoff of course. to capture you. Of course. I've, that's why I can easily ask you that question because sure. you are open about yeah. um, the potential for you to be captured. Yeah. I, I want to be captured. I want to sell black people into slavery. <laughs> I want um to use religion to indoctrinate blacks and I want to do it open-minded. People must be like, well, he told us. I mean, on my social media profiles, my tagline now is, I'm, I'm trying to colonize as many minds as possible. It's like, who the fuck says that? It's like, yeah. I said it. So now you know. You know, um, I'm not ready to sell out. I'm trying to make human, humanity better because we are virus. We're self-destructive. We destroy nature. There's something wrong in the way we're living. And I think I can help the poor, I can help the middle class, and I can help rich white people. Rich white people live in in prisons they're not aware of. Oh, yeah. They can't walk around freely. Johan Rupert and his kids were getting death threats. So I think they've moved to either Switzerland or London. It's not a nice way to live. Yeah, the kids can be kidnapped anytime. Yeah, so no one wants to live like that. So it's like, I think I have a solution for you. I think I can help you. So I'm I'm trying to make humanity better. The reason I'm saying I want to get comfortable with selling out is because the type of brand I'm building, I want to be able to tell people that yes, 
um, Nikki Oppenheimer pays me every month and he doesn't give me cash to be a mouthpiece. I do consulting work with him. <laughs> he asks me, so what are your thoughts on the black youth? And I'm like, you know, Nikki, you know, I think young black kids are loving I'm a piano. There's this new thing. You know, it's like, oh, okay, so what do you think? I'm like, I, I think we should probably infiltrate some piano, you know, and find a way to, and you know, there's this channel called Mocha Love. I can o organize a meeting with the Opry Tao. We can have a platform there where we start telling, you know, and tell people I'm doing sophisticated conditioning with these people you guys supposedly hate. But I want to be able to say, thanks to the work we're doing, we've gotten so many black kids to not be dependent on grants. And people now grow their own food. And people are now minimalists. And people now own their um, reality. And we've gotten so many black South African kids to be all over the world and to travel. And if that makes me a bad person, I'll be the bad guy. I'll be the Hitler. Because one of the things about Hitler is he reduced unemployment from 30% to almost nothing. Um, he allowed women to go and be women. And he was giving them grants when they fell pregnant. Um, he industrialized Germany. Volkswagen, Hugo Boss. Um, a lot of the industrial, he did a lot of great things. But then everyone focuses on the Jews because that's the story that goes out there. So if I'm going to be the... Whatever you do, don't kill 5 million people. Just... Can yeah. I say this on the, on the platform? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck it. I'm going to say it. It's you saying it. You and I guess I'll be quoted in future. It's, if yeah, ever. it's coming from your mouth. I don't care. Um, unlike you, I don't... Uh, not that I don't value human life, but I, I don't think every human being has a right to live and should be allowed to live. Um... I had to learn to be comfortable with abortion. Abortion is very necessary, in my opinion. I wish South Africa could uh, legalize euthanasia so that people that want to be taken out don't have to fucking hang themselves with a rope. Yeah. That's so disgusting. Um, I believe there are people that need to be put down, like dogs with rabies. I believe for humanity to prosper, and you see this over and over again in history, there are people that need to be taken out. And I am trying to build myself to be the type of person that one, I want to be able to be Kim Jong-un, Mao Zedong, Vladimir Putin, Joe Biden, Barack Obama, and George Bush. Those are all mass murderers. Mm. Robert Mugabe. Um, I want to have the ability to, to mass murder people if I fundamentally believe, and that, that's where the danger comes in with power, if I fundamentally believe that it's, it's in the best interests of the people and humanity. Yeah, I was about to say as a counter to that, that in as much as you want to get to that point, you are leaving it uh, to the possibility of someone determining who gets to be taken out. It's very dangerous. Who gets, yeah. I mean, even you, you, Penuel Mlocho, yeah. someone observing you, yeah. who is either EFF or ANC, who does not believe or strongly disagrees with your message, if we were living in such a world, they could have long decided that you needed to be, to be taken out. Yeah. And that's the, the, the unnecessary evil about that or such a system that someone could kill you because we've opened up uh, the rabbit hole for people to kill, to decide who gets killed. The mm. reason the ANC has some power today and I was sort of billionaires is because going back to animals, there was a group of buck who realized that it doesn't matter how much you plead with the lions. It doesn't matter if you're willing to offer them certain bucks up for sacrifice. They are lions and they will do what lions do. Yeah. And the only way for them to ever take you seriously is to, number one, show them that you're willing to eat your own and show them that you're willing to eat them as well. That's why Cyril today almost doesn't fucking care, you know, about what happens to the country. And he almost looks like members of the apartheid government. So I've come to realize and learn that to be respected at that level, it's not really an initiation of sorts, but you need to tell, look, on Nelson Mandela to set up um Konto Isizu. It's because you realize that the language of the ultimate powerful, after you've tried to tell them nice stories and you're like, I believe in you, I'm willing to work hard, boss. After you've done all of that and you've begged and you're like, I'm willing to be a slave, the ultimate language they understand is violence. And if you do not have a healthy appetite for violence, you will always be dominated. And I always want to have a healthy appetite for violence, regardless of who it is, but in the pursuit of building a better world. And I don't mind being quoted on that. I don't mind being the bad guy. Yeah. Mao had to be the bad guy in China. Millions of people died. Joseph Stalin in the Soviet Union. Mugabe, like I said. Nelson Mandela and them, luckily they didn't have to kill anyone, but they were close to that with them Konto Esizwe and the guerrilla um, leg of the fight. Because they were like, we've begged. Tupac has spoken about the Black Panthers. 
We begged and we marched. These motherfuckers were not listening, so we had to take up arms. Because that's the language that they fucking understand. You're speaking to a lion and you're begging. Lions don't fucking understand that you need to make them bleed. That's when they're like, hey, hey, come on. Hey, hey, mama, no. No, let's talk. Let's have a codesa. And I'm like, thank you. I understand that that's the language they, they speak. And I'm comfortable with that language. And to your question, I hope I never have to kill anyone. Um, and I'm definitely not comfortable at all to kill anyone right now. But I am working my way into building a mind where I am extremely comfortable with killing what I deem evil. Because that is the ultimate level of power. The ability to create life through pregnancy and the ability to take life through murder are the biggest superpowers you can ever have. Followed by the ability to master language and infiltrate human minds and psychology and get human beings to literally move from their homes Guazulu, to live in Joburg because they're chasing money and they want to have a dream and have an Instagram life. And I want to have those powers because that's fundamentally the essence of what God is. And I am building myself to become God. I just want to be a better God than the ones that people pray to that seem to not answer prayers. When Durban is being flooded, like the story of Noah. When there's mass poverty and people are committing suicide, it's like, God, you know, it's part of God's plan. I want to be able to answer you and be like, this is not part of the plan. You guys shouldn't be starving. Go and fucking grow your own food. This is not God's will. I'm telling you now that it's capitalism's will. And capitalism wants you to fucking keep hoping into the sky. And I'm telling you, go fucking grow food. Go solve your, your own problems. Empower yourself. I am maybe, if there is a God out there, I'm an instrument and a vessel and a voice and I'm the return of Christ like Haley Selassie and I'm here to tell you guys it's time to catch a fucking wake up. God has sent me to tell you to catch a fucking wake up because you are now worshipping false idols like Google. I never got to surveillance. Like Google, like Facebook, like algorithms. I want likes. I want reactions. I want to trend on Twitter. Those are false idols and God has sent me to tell you God is you. Go be your own God and go live and be great and do God's work. And if a Christian, Muslim, Buddhist out there is like, oh, okay, all I needed to hear is that he's an instrument. Cool. If not, people are like, well, but the Bible's, I'm like, fuck the Bible. I'm telling you. Read Penalism Principles, which is my source of knowledge, and then carry on from there. Right now, Google is God. That's why we have surveillance. Yeah. And uh, we speak about microchips. They currently don't need microchips because our phone is a microchip. Yeah, we it carry is. it every day. They know where we are. You know what I mean? All so the, um, the day that technology comes, I'm going to take it because it's going to speak in my ear. If I'm looking for certain data, it will update me in real time. If there's traffic along the way when I'm traveling, when I leave here, it's going to tell me, oof, avoid that route. I'm like, thank you. You know, and when you start quoting lyrical um, lines, um, it's going to be like, oh, he's quoting Jay-Z from... And I'll be like... Hey, that's a Jay-Z song. Like, how the fuck do you know that? I'm like, because I've got a chip. And it hears everything and it can tell me that, look, something is happening out there. Do you know someone's just been shot in Rosebank? How the fuck do you know? I just got updated in my head. So we've already got that in the palm of our hands now. The chip, and nothing the, is going to stop. The, the dangerous potential about the chip is the same with what uh, is being said China is trying to do with its population. The facial recognition and knowing... Um, the whereabouts of each and every citizen. With the chip, there's always a potential because obviously everything is centralized. You book your tickets through that chip. Um, if there is a government or a ruling class in a country at any given time that disagrees with your message, they can always uh, deactivate your chip. That means it limits where you can ac what you can access. Um, they know where you are. You are easy to track down. Um, they can obviously sabotage everything that you're trying to do because it's in you now. Yeah. I think maybe that's the drawback, perhaps. Going back to hypocrisy where I said Christians will come and call me names sure. and they worship a Jesus Christ who behave like me. South Africa is pumped with a lot of American propaganda and America wants us to demonize China and they'll tell you things like they switch off your chip and if your social currency is not... The same America which... Um, blocks me off Facebook. Yeah. If I say things they don't like, um, an account gets deactivated. We live in a country where you still need a permit and a visa to enter, which means you, your movement is restricted. I want to come and visit you, but in your complex, like, who are you? Put your fingerprint here. You're not welcome. 
we're already living in that world. China is just being more upfront with it. That's all. And for some people, that's good enough. And they're like, it's for, to protect our sovereignty. Mm. If you don't like it, go somewhere else. That's where we live now. And I really do. So I don't want to build a, a Jonestown and an Orania, but we, one of my ideas is human preservation farms. We need spaces that human beings can unplug and go to. They obviously won't be tech-free. The capitalists will never allow that. But as close to tech-free as possible. Where you go there, there's no cell phone signal. Mm. There's no electricity. There's no anything. Where you can go back to being an animal. I'd, I'd like spaces like that where you can unplug. So if China's going to be like, yeah, if you don't get an ID, if you don't have an schooling, if you don't plug into government, you then have to go to Penel's farm and you're going to have to grow your own food and be naked and you're like, as long as I have that exit. Yeah. That's what I want to pitch to the capitalists. That's not exactly punishment. I would you embrace know? that. I would embrace that if, we, if I could be banished to such... Well, not, not banished, but the option must always be there. Yeah. And currently the capitalists, the system doesn't work anymore. You've retrenched me. Now I can't pay tax. I can't pay uh, rent. I can't feed the capitalist piece. What must I do? That's why now they speak about a universal basic income, which is bullshit. Oh, it's yeah. just them feeding the beast again. I'm like, stop it. Let the person go. I know that if I lose my job, there's another life. It's a hard life. When it gets dark, there's no electricity. So we have to sleep or make a fire. We have to grow our own trees. We have to grow our own. But it's always there. It's, it's one of the reasons I admire Afrikaners, by the way. And I get dragged by emotional black people and it's fine. These people live a life where they can be in Pretoria and be rich and live in Waterkloof. But on the weekend, they're at the farm or they're camping or they're hiking or they're fishing. They're still sort of in touch with nature. If the system collapses, the little Afrikaans boy, Yanni van der Merwe, can still go catch a fish and bry it on the side of the river. He can go and sleep in a tent. He's not scared of being out in the wild. He can hike. Do you he think can that, grow do you think his that own that's food. A, do you think that that's a common experience for the two to three million Afrikaans people that are in South Africa? No. Because that's like, I think it's a niche number of people. It's such a smaller, it's a statistically insignificant number of people who are like that. Because I think I everyone, agree. everyone in the country and in the world are so tuned in. If Facebook stops working, which it did uh, Yo, for nine hours. Was it hours, last year or whatever? Um, Jeez. Yeah, it was in 2020, sorry. Yo. And yeah, people the world freaked went out. Berserk. And then WhatsApp as well at the same yeah. time, you couldn't send WhatsApp. So I think in as much as you're describing that, I don't think that that's a common thing amongst Africans. Uh, I, Africans I agree with you. Yeah, but I, I, agree I, with you. I, I, I agree with you that that's something that we need to develop amongst ourselves as well. Our relationship with nature, our ability to produce our own food and so on and so forth. Can you commit to us talking maybe next month? Um, I would love to chat to you as regularly as possible. Yeah. Um, if you're happy to have me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I say the same thing to note. I'm like, if you want to be here once a month or twice a month, we, sure. can, we can chop it up. Because I realize it's been over two hours now. I like limiting my conversations with people to consumable. Sure. Uh, for, for the audience, long. For the audience, yeah. For yeah. the audience, just consumable chunks. Because sure. there are a lot of people. I think if we are watched by, I think I, I preempt that ten to 50,000 people are going to watch this episode. Jeez. But only maybe 4,000 will get to the end. To the end, fair enough. You know, no, so. I'm, I'm happy to come back. Um, you're very right about niche Afrikaners. It's part of the reason why I'm a non-racialist. The, the bulk of everyone is just a puppet of the system. Most white Afrikaans people, they're racist, not because they're racist, it's because they were taught to be racist. They have privilege, not that they earned it, it's because it was built by a system. So if you change the script, they will change. And that's all it is. But I love the fact that a lot of them aspire to that life of mm -hmm. being able to fish and camp. And for black people, we have now demonized that. The idea of like, so, it, so you're just going to go it, it sleep poverty, yeah. outside poverty, with yeah. no, and go fishing for why? Yeah. We can go to Ocean Basket. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, yeah. what the fuck? So yeah. it's one of the th things that I want for penalism. The ability to straddle, let's call it three worlds. Fundamentally, the capitalist world, be able to make as much money as you can in the capitalist world and have a soft life, but comfortably be able to live a hard life. If our economy crashes and we become a Zimbabwe, you can still grow your own food. You can go fishing. You can live comfortably relatively comfortably without money yeah and then the third life is we need to plug into the future of the world can we be futuristic and create our own microchips and have our own surveillance economy and build rockets and if there's a moon and a mars 
we can go then build our own airplanes and whatever and straddle all three worlds but in particular these two because that's where you have a healthy mind for mm. most people they're stuck in one of them and it becomes a form of jail there you go thank you very much for joining us Mr. Malajra. thanks Holmes ah bruh thank you very much for watching um, I hope I didn't take a lot of your data thank you so much we really appreciate you liking commenting subscribing thank you for watching us boom boom